of an executive session for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the HTA because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detr detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position. So I need a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Was that Jen or Mina? That was Mina. Okay. Mina? Sorry. Yes. Um, okay. Mina? Yes. Jen? Yes. Nancy? Yes. And I'm a yes. So we are all a yes. And we will adjourn to the other room for executive session, and then we will, re we will exit out of executive session for the purpose of returning to the regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the May 3rd um, regular meeting of the Hopkinton School Committee. I'll ask that you stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Boy, that started. <laughs> I know. Well, no, it stopped. All, All right, we ha have some unexpected musical accompaniment from mm -hmm. the middle school, so that's good. Um, okay, so I will run quickly through our agenda, and then we will get started. We actually opened our meeting at 6.30. We had need of an executive session for the purposes of discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the HTA, and because having the discussion in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the school committee's bargaining position. So um, following that, we exited out of executive session to adjourn into the regular meeting. Um, we will open um, momentarily our public hearing on school choice, our annual public hearing on school choice. Following that, we'll have recognitions. Um, next will be the first opportunity for public comment, followed by reports to the school committee. Um, under new business, we will be hearing um, we will be, sorry, we'll be um, hearing the school improvement plans from all of our schools. Following that, we'll review the middle school handbooks. Um, after that, we'll have our vote on school choice. Following that, we will vote to ratify the memorandum of agreement with the HTA. And um, the last item under new business is the lacrosse scorekeeping position. Under old business, we'll review school committee policy IJNDB, uh, school committee policy BIA, and school committee policy KF. Following that is our second opportunity for public comment. Last on our agenda is items by consensus and fingers crossed will be done by 10.30. <laughs> um, so without further ado, because it is seven o'clock and that is the time that we posted our public hearing, I will ask for a motion to open the public hearing on school choice. So moved. And a second? A second. Um, so a motion by Ms. Kavanaugh, a second by Ms. Devlin. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so is anybody here from the public that would like to speak about school choice? Okay. I will ask for a motion to close the public hearing on school choice. So moved. Um, and a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, and all in favor? Yes. 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 And that is unanimous, and we have now closed our public hearing. Thank you. So um, without further ado, I would like to invite our PTA representatives to come up and um, give us a presentation about some grants, right? Come right on up over here so we can uh, hear you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having us. Let me pull up my notes. I apologize. That's okay. And if you guys can just introduce yourself. I'm Jen Red, PTA President. Thanks. Um, Holly Moran, PTA Vice President. Let me pull up my notes. We had a very exciting year this year. Um, I think last year we raised a little over $100,000, and most of that goes back to the schools. Um, and as of March 31st, not everyone had spent their budget, but we do have a breakdown of some of the exciting things that we paid for this year. Um, you? We have just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, so our extracurricular programs we have at the elementary um, schools, which is center. Elmwood and Hopkins, and we spend, um, we 
provide after school activities five days a week. We have instructors from the community come in and teach the students um, things like um, computers, programming, we have sports activities, things like that. So that is a, a service that we provide, but we have the, um, we charge the students for these activities and we pay the instructors. Um, that is a fundraising activity for us, but we also offer financial aid and one-to-one -one support for paraeducation for students who do qualify for either one of those services. Um, and as of March 31st, we had spent over $2,700 for those two um, Great. areas. Um, this year we gave out $3,000 in high school scholarships. Those are just awarded and they'll be announced in three weeks on March 31st, sorry, May 31st um, at the high school evening. So that would be awesome. And then we also spent, at Center alone, we spent $4,100 for enrichment programs. That includes programs like Brian Lies, uh, Pumpernickel Puppet Puppets, which is my daughter's favorite, <laughs> and Len Cabral. Um, for Elmwood, they had um, enrichment programs, but they also had a special enrichment program, which was March Madness. It was a literacy program. We bought books for all the school, for the school, and then we spent um, $5,200 just for the books for the March Madness. It was a great program. It was well-received. The kids loved it, um, so it was an awesome program. Um, this year for middle school, we spent $6,700 for enrichment programs. That included Yoko Watson, Watkins, um, Gary Schmidt, and Shakespeare Now. Um, for Elmwood enrichment programs outside of the March Madness, Madness Literacy Program, we spent $8,000. And for high school, as of right now, and the high school has a budget of about $23,000, um, as of March 31st, they only spent $8,000 of that, and that included programs like RAD, the Book Club, Student of the Month, the Science Fair, the Scholastic Art and Writing entrance fees, and we had a ton of winners in both categories, and the list goes on. And for Hopkins Enrichment Programs, including Understanding Our Differences, which is a fantastic program which helps students understand students of different abilities, what it's like to have some of those abilities, um, so understanding our differences was a huge program. They also created a new program, which is the yoga workshops. So we have a teacher come in and teach the kids yoga to help them de-stress during the day, and it's a lot of fun. And also text exploration, which was another, was another <laughs> enrichment program. So very excited. It's a huge range of programs that we support, and we do it, you know, just with the school district, what they're looking for. We try to work with each principal and see what they need are what the needs are, and address as many of those needs as possible. So it's a great it's a great opportunity to support the schools and get the fundraising dollars to the places that they need them. So. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or? Yeah, just comments. This is fantastic. You know, you have like I don't know how many volunteers you're able to pull in to do all the work, and you yourselves are volunteers. I can't imagine how many hours. It's a lot of hours. I think our roster is about 95 different volunteers, and some schools have more volunteers than others, but the high school, we spend so much money, but we have a great people in place um, to help to make sure that all the students are getting what they need from Mr. Bishop, and um, it's amazing to spend a lot of time with everybody and get to know the principals. That was the best thing I learned this year, is just seeing how excited the principals were about what they do and how excited they are to help the students and just be a part of their lives. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think even in terms of programming, my son is taking a couple of programs and he just loves it. Um, and just the fact that it's right after school and you don't have to take them anywhere, mm -hmm. um, that's a huge plus too. So absolutely. thank you for all that you do. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad you came tonight to talk about some of these too because I feel like we didn't necessarily, or I'm sure you said it, but maybe I didn't notice that so many of these things were from the HTA. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot going on that I think maybe folks may not even realize how much work is going on behind the scenes by you guys. So this is great. A lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, it's, I, I keep saying that I don't even know everything that we do. Yeah. Holly just started with us about two months ago, so she's trying to catch up to speed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with the hard winter, it was a little even more catching up to speed, but um, it, I, I've just been inspired by all the things that, you know, the teachers do and the students do and just how excited everybody is to create a great environment educationally for our students. So I'm so happy to be a part of it. So well, thank it's you. great. I, 
It's I echo both of my <laughs> colleagues here, but I also really want to highlight uh, an appreciation for the financial aid and the one-to-one -one right. support that you provide for both our students who are disabled and our students who are economically may not be able to reach some of these great programs that you're offering. It's phenomenal to be able to make it accessible for everybody. So thank you. And I know in addition to all the programming and stuff you put on, the fundraising that goes into putting that getting that much money together is uh, thankless and tireless, but much appreciated from and noticed from those of us who see, hear what you're doing and have done some fundraising and don't, <laughs> not everybody signs up to do it. So I, no, it, it's, thank you. It's That's hard. a lot of money. It's a, hard, it's a hard, it's a lot of money and it's a hard ask each time. But I think like to your point about the paraeducational um, support and the financial aid, I, I'm just so excited that we have the budget for it and we've created an extra line in our budget this year just to address paraeducational support because not only in the um, extracurricular programs we deliver, we were able to offer paraeducational support Great. to we deliver so that the students at Elmwood who wanted to participate were able to participate and that's just amazing. It, it is amazing in that it, I have heard a lot of positive things in the community, particularly in the special ed realm of how appreciative people are to be able to access that. So well done. Thank you. Well, and I just want to echo what Nancy said. I, many, many, many years ago, I sat in your, your seat. And it's, um, you know, it's exciting to see. I'm, I'm thrilled to see Yoko Watkins is still coming. It's exciting to read, you know, some familiar programs, but also see some really exciting new opportunities. And I do know what a tremendous amount of work and time it is. And it is no small feat to organize basically a small army of people to put all of this on. So I really appreciate your time. And, and just like Nancy said, what really jumped out to me in particular um, was the one-to-one -one support. I'm so grateful that that's something that's been added. It was under discussion, you know, many years ago. So I'm really, really particularly pleased to see that that um, is, is highlighted. And I, I think that's wonderful. So, I mean, I think we all know, and Holly and I knew each other in a different format a while ago, but keeping kids engaged and busy after school and um, in community with each other and feeling included is just critical in terms of social and emotion, emotional health and, and um, making good choices and all kinds of things. So this is just really fantastic work, and we really are grateful for not just the money, but also the time that you invest um, in supporting all of our schools. It really, it really is wonderful. We're very, very fortunate to have such a strong PTA in our town. So well, thank, thank you. you. I also wanted to mention something that's not as public. Um, our book fairs have always been a subject of conversation in town. Um, and we have always had a, um, where you're able to donate towards the book fairs for the library. And we were able to talk with all of the principals who were involved so far. And they were more than willing to have that fund go back to the students who do need um, some support so that they are able to purchase books. That's um, phenomenal. Fantastic. So that it was started really this year, but it will be funds for next year, but we're, we've been able to use, um, and Scholastic actually matches that money for us. Wow. Wow, so. wow. good for you. That's fin fantastic. That was something I was really excited about, because it was something that I brought up at the beginning of the year, and we kept talking about it and talking about it, and it was simple. Where does the money go? It goes to the library. Does it need to go to the library? Absolutely not. That's, That's fantastic. That is fantastic, and recognizing a need there and, and meeting it is phenomenal. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. Thank you. Thanks. All right. I will simply say thank you from the STEAM team. <laughs> <laughs> they, I know it's an ongoing conversation, and there's so much that we want to do with yes. SEAM, and hopefully we can get somebody in place that will help us update that website and keep that, the SEAM information going. But Well, the minute we asked, you were there. So thank you. I'm definitely passionate about STEAM, too. Literacy <laughs> and STEAM are my big thing, so very happy and good to have that conversation open. So. All right, well, so just to, to make sure that we comply with all regulations, we're going to officially vote to accept your generous grants. So you. we'll just ask you to sit there for one more minute. Um, <laughs> I need a motion to accept the grants from the HPTA. So moved. And a second? Second. Um, okay. So that was a motion by Nancy and a second by Mina? Yes. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, unanimous. Thank you for the money. Thank you for your time. Thank you so, so much. We really Absolutely. Thank you so much it. for inviting us. We really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We love starting the night out with something bright and exciting <laughs> like this. Gifts are always, are always positive. <laughs> Um, okay, so next up we have our first opportunity for public comment. I don't know if there are any members of the public here. 
that would like to comment, but I don't see any. Um, I just will take this opportunity to report that I did receive one email in between our last meeting and this one um, that was asking, expressing some concern and questioning um, the evolution of the bus fees in um, in the district, so I was able to respond to that. But other than that, I haven't received any um, public comment uh, in the last couple of weeks. So um, moving right along, we'll start with our student council report. If you guys want to come over and join us, and just um, I know it's not your first time, but just say your name, and we'd love to hear what's going on at the high school. Sure. So um, my name is Young. And so I'm Dan. Yeah. And uh, we are juniors for student council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, to start off, um, yesterday we had a regional student advisor council meeting, and um, our student council was able to send five members, and two of us ran for positions, um, one being chair and one being a alternate state delegate, which is pretty cool. We get to be more involved with other schools in the region and kind of see, like, bring, like feedback from their schools and like what they're doing and what we're doing. It's a, it's a way for us to get more connected with other schools and try to improve our schools that way. And um, another thing is tomorrow is the Be Free Spring Jam and there's free Chipotle catering so that's always nice, that's always a draw and um, I think that it's going to be a fun time. I really enjoy those. Um, not so fun though is the AP exams. <laughs> so they are from May 7th to May 18th and they are two weeks long. And we have around 500 students participating in these exams. So it uh, shows for our high school's great education system. Yeah. And prom, big thing. May 11th, it's coming up. So it should be a fun time. Absolutely. Yeah. Where's prom this year? Uh, Lake Pearl nice. in Rentham. So same spot as last year. Uh, spring sports have really started to kick off, especially with the warmer weather. Um, I know seasons like track and baseball and softball were slow to start with the rain early on and the cold temperatures, but with like the 90 degree weather yesterday, it was really nice to get some games and meets in. Um, another thing is Relay for Life, May 18th. Um, the committee has been working towards it all year and we've been fundraising a lot and I think it's right around the period where we wrap stuff up and get stuff finalized and get more people and the final kick in and should be a great event. Okay, and just adding on with that, um, next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, and as to student council's contributions, um, so throughout the week, uh, outside of lunches, students will be able to write messages to teachers on little apple-shaped note cards uh, that will then be delivered to them. Uh, just to show their appreciation and I think that the administration all the teachers are very excited to hear that on Monday and Friday teachers will be able to pick music to play in between classes. Oh, ah. mm -hmm. hold on yeah. to your hats. Very special. <laughs> yeah. And uh, coming up in June is the Hillerfest, annual Hillerfest that we have every year. I think it's um, probably one of the funnest events. Yeah. I mean definitely. it's just to close off the school year and there's um, live music, and there's food, there's fun and games, and there's usually an excellent turnout every single yeah. year. Yeah, and even last year, there we was... Got rain we down, got rain down. But we made a quick transition. We, we did. the AC, so... We, we pulled through and uh, went to the AC, and it was still, you know, such a great event. Um, adding on, uh, there is the Jimmy Fund Golf Fundraiser. Uh, I believe that's coming up. Is that in... It's uh, after June 8th, I believe. After June 8th. Okay. And basically... Uh, the Jimmy Fund will be moving in their trucks and putting in um, basically a mini golf course into the um, into the gymnasium. And st I think this year we've been working on it for three or four weeks in student council. Um, it's a lot of preparation, and we're hoping that the turnout will be excellent. Yeah. Is, that, is wow. that new? Yeah, it yeah. is yeah. new. Okay, I don't, mm -hmm. that sounds cool. That's a yeah. very fun idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, May eighth is um, the voting for the turf field. Uh, I think that's a Tuesday. Yeah, we're trying to get a lot of people to rally behind yes. turf fields. Yes. Yeah, so Thank we're just you. hoping to get as many people um, behind us as we can. And I believe um, the students are helping to uh, babysit, babysit yeah. for people who are deciding to vote because, you know, maybe some of the voters think that they're, um, they probably have parental obligations to the children <laughs> and so um, students are stepping in to help babysit and probably get a few more voters which is nice. Thank you. 
Uh, and in May, uh, as every year, there's the Underclassmen Awards. I believe that probably speaks for itself, um, us being juniors. Yeah. Uh, and the art show and the one-act shows are both on March 17th this year. Uh, yeah, and just to close off, uh, I believe the last, student, the last school council meeting is the 16th. Yeah. Great. That's all we have to do. You guys have had a busy year. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sounds fantastic. It's boiling down to these couple of months. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Snow days to make up, and then we'll be out. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 33 Thanks more days. <laughs> but who is counting? The counting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. We thank really you. appreciate the updates. We oh, This is always a highlight for us. So thank nice. you for coming. I'm sure you are dying to go home and study for the AP exam. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll let you go oh, yeah. practice your golf swing or whatever it is that you need to do. But thank you very swing. much for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, Dr. Kavanaugh, mm -hmm. good luck filling your shoes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Okay, so I only have a couple of things. Um, I had the opportunity to visit Keefe Tech. The superintendent there, John Evans, calls and invited me. Um, and it was an amazing experience, I thought. So beyond things like you know plumbing and electrical and estheticians and those kinds of things, they are changing some of their programming. So they have added some of the medical field. So there's those sort of pre-nursing programs, pre-dental programs. Um, and I know that all of our eighth graders go there for a visit, and I would encourage them to enjoy the day. It it's, uh, looked wonderful. Yeah, and I did get a nice lunch in their in their restaurant it's as delicious. well. Delicious! Last year, the I lunch couldn't is believe great. How good it was. I was very good. Like from the outside, you don't get a sense of how much is in that building. Yeah. It's impressive. It is impressive in there. Yeah. I actually so. think you can go there anytime to, to, eat, to eat. You can, and he encouraged us to say that there is a, a particular door when you go in. You can get your nails done and then go to lunch. Oh my! And yes, all in one fell swoop. So. That's good to know. It All right, taking that one away. Yeah, okay. pre-town meeting. Maybe yeah, that's what we all need to do. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Um, I did want to thank EHOP for Know Your Vote. I thought that that was a great night, and I thought it gave us an opportunity to sort of, you know, share some of the issues and some of the facts. So that was wonderful. Um, I did also bring this picture because this week. Um, Deb Pinto had called me from the middle school and, and asked if I would like to come over and see what happens before the middle school students, all 700 of them, take the MCAS test. And I went over to the middle school only to be sort of stunned by, by what they do. So they ensure that every kid gets some kind of physical movement, cross body work. Uh, and I will show you just a little bit of this. But what the teachers have said is that since they implemented this, um, the kids get 20 minutes of good physical exercise, bathe the brain in oxygen, oxygen, you know, release some endorphins, and it has made great changes to the testing, that they can actually sit and kind of decompress a little bit as they test. And if last year's scores were any testament to that, I, I think it might be working. <laughs> it was very exciting. Um, yeah, I think that that was all that I had. Um, Hopefully, I did also go to the Center School Reuse, and as we have been thinking about perhaps moving an 18 to 22 program over to Center, if we decide that that would be the right thing, for, fit for that building, um, in the process, I have been invited to see the one that Westboro has done called the Borough, and so I think Dr. Zaleski and I will be going there to take oh, a look at their so program. Nice. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, so for the school committee chair report, um, I have approved for payment the accounts payable warrants 18-072, 18-074, and 18-075. All warrants have been included in your packet. I have approved for payment the payroll warrant S18022. All warrants have been included in your packet. In addition, um, I wanted to give you an update about the moderators meeting. So every year leading up to town meeting, there's a meeting with the town moderator, the town manager, the superintendent, board of selectmen chair, school committee chair, appropriations chair, who also is there, planning board chair. I think that was mostly it. Um, oh, the town attorney. 
just to, to go through the warrant and to sort of walk through town meeting. So um, that was a really productive meeting. We, we stayed just through the section that was related to us. Um, but one suggestion that was made was that we make a motion at the beginning of town meeting to ask that the turf fields be considered as the first article on the second night of town meeting um, because there's a high level of interest, obviously, with people with young children. Um, and so as you heard our, our student council members report, um, babysitting is being organized so that people will be able to take advantage of that if that makes a difference in then getting to town meeting. And of course, we all are very clear that you know, the optimal participation in town meeting is to stay for all of it. But it is, you know, two very long nights. And um, so at least if people can come for part of it, they're certainly encouraged to stay beyond the, the turf field. And there's no guarantee that the motion is going to pass anyway. But that is the plan. We will try to make that motion. And there are some other motions that, were, um, that will be made at the beginning of town meeting to reorder some of the other articles. Um, the town moderator is working really hard to make it efficient and also, I think, a little bit um, easier to manage for people who are attending. So I thought that that was just a great um, uh, it just felt really organized and, and efficient to me this year, so I thought that was great. And then just other than that, leading up to town meeting um, preparation, we are posted for both nights, or actually I think Megan posted us for three nights, so I hope she's not jinxing us, but <laughs> but um, we're posted for three nights at starting at 6 o'clock just in case we have need of a meeting. Sometimes we have to take a last-minute vote or make a de decision on something. So we are posted in the event that that happens. Um, new this year is electronic voting. So I sent you all the link earlier, but for anybody that's watching, um, the link is on the town website, and they're encouraging people to prepare prior to arriving at town meeting, if at all possible. And there are several opportunities. They've been at the library. They were at the senior center this morning when I was there, helping people download the app and answer questions. Um, and so uh, so this, they want to be very clear. This is a pilot this year to see how we like it. Sometimes we don't like new things at town meetings, so we're going to try it and see how it goes. And um, so to the extent that everybody can be prepared in advance, I think that would be a wonderful thing, and it's certainly an, a good new initiative. Um, so I think that that was all for my report. Uh, why don't we start with liaison reports? You want to start, Nina? Do you have anything? Sure. Um, I have a few things. The first one is uh, tech. Tech had organized an open house, so that was extremely helpful. Uh, being on the board and you know, when you're voting on something, you want to know what exactly is going on. So the open house was extremely helpful to understand what are the various aspects of tech. And TECA is part of tech as well. Uh, Nancy, you had a question about that earlier. Um, and Liz McGonigal had done a fabulous job organizing all of that. And um, some other member district uh, uh, representatives were also there. So that was fantastic. Um, the other report that I have is on the community communications. Um, we are doing pretty well as a group, I think, uh, and it's all coming together. We had Dr. Kavanaugh join us and the rest of the members. Um, I don't know who has control of this. Uh, oh, I do. Uh, would you be able to go to cal.hcam.tv? Sure. Um, so we are in the final stages uh, where all the members had participated in the community calendar, which um, Jim Cousins from HCAM um, has been working tirelessly to pull together. And uh, so this is what the community calendar would look like. There are different views. Um, Dr. Kavanaugh, if you don't mind moving to the agenda and the monthly view. Um, so this would be available to all nonprofit events as well as any um, uh, for-profit organization which is holding a free event. So it's an online um, calendar, so any organization can post to it by reaching out to HCAM. So more instructions would be coming up. We're hoping to go live um, next week. Uh, so this has been very exciting. Um, the other thing we've been doing is talking to each of the organizations within the group to see how is it that we are already connected with the schools? Because a lot of these organizations are working with the schools. So we've, we've, been, we've started that process of reviewing how it's working and what is it that could be done better. And you know, obviously, we want to be realistic. We can't commit to everything. And um, Dr. Kavanaugh came up with some very exciting ideas herself. Um, so we'll see uh, where that, uh, you know, how we're able to implement it. Mm. 
What else? Um, um, I guess um, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I have a short one. We, um, Center School Reuse, Dr. Kavanaugh and Jean and I were there, and um, Dr. Kavanaugh presented a great presentation to the committee um, about um, how we would like to take advantage of Center School if it's a possibility. So um, I feel like in the conversation that sort of ensued after the presentation was done, um, that they're sort of in the reaching toward the final stages. I don't want to say in the final stages, but um, to make a recommendation to the selectmen for what we would hope to do with Center School once it's decommissioned. Yeah. And that's it. So I just a brief one as well. CPAC had its first morning meeting this month, uh, which is a pilot to add on to the evening meetings that they're already doing. They're going to continue on with that in the fall to allow parents who can't get out at night to have something that they're able to go to. Uh, and then they, there was an ADHD Essentials uh, workshop that Dr. Kavanaugh and I both attended last night. So well attended, I thought, too. It was. And interesting. And interesting. Yeah. yeah. So. Excellent. Um, and so for me, I think we already covered the turf field. That will be voted on um, next week at town meeting. And then the other thing, I think I was just trying to remember we have a, it feels like a, quite a long time since we had our last meeting. So I think at that point I had not gone through the appropriations process. So since I believe since our last meeting, um, Susan and Carol and I have gone to appropriations. All of our they've voted to recommend all of our capital articles. They've approved our budget. So we've completed that step of the process. It was sort of the final piece of the budget process. So um, we're all ready to move forward at town meeting with the town budget as well as all of our other capital articles and um, the other thing that I should have mentioned earlier and I will mention now is that we also did um, this year we were asked to submit all of our town meeting presentations a week early a week early two weeks early um, so that they could be made available to the public so we did that Monday and they are all posted on the town website all of the town meeting presentations should be available so people are really encouraged to check those out um, before town meeting so that they sort of have a leg up on what the issues are and what their questions are going to be and as Dr. Kavanaugh said also the Educate Hockington Know Your Vote was a great resource mm -hmm. that really was very comprehensive um, there were covered multiple boards and a lot of different um, articles that are being brought forward at town meeting so Lots of ways to get informed before we get started next week on Monday at 7 o'clock at the middle school auditorium. Um, so unless there are any other questions or liaison reports, why don't we turn it over to um, Ms. Rothermick for the financial report. Sure. Um, so what you have in your packet um, is our spending through, uh, let's see, April 25th. Um, so as you know, you know, just to reiterate where we've been for the year, we added four FTEs during the year. Um, we had to institute a spending freeze several months ago, but we've been able to see what was a projected deficit now turn into a small positive variance um, of 56000 at this point in time. We've asked all the... Um, schools and you know the basically the district to finalize all their spending by May 15th um, this will facilitate two things it'll allow us to have a clean cutoff at year-end it'll also give us more definition of exactly what we will have um, our projected end-of-year balances so great. that's great news I just want to say I, I I felt like from the reports you had given that there would be a way that this would work out but it yeah, a I'm, bit more personnel is, is one of the things that you see. There's, you know, there's a lot of variances. You know, people have long-term leaves, and, you know, some return, some decide not to return, and then there's unpaid time, and you have subs. So there's a lot of ebb and flow, especially in the personnel. Um, so we did make up a, a lot with that. That's not to say that things can't change between now and the end of June, because things happen and people go out on leave. Also appreciate the... Uh, I can't be easy to operate a, a department within the school and be on a, having a spending freeze. That people being willing to work with everybody on that is, I'm sure, yeah, makes it that's easier. true. I, I give a lot of credit to all all the principals, um, Dr. Zaleski, um, the athletic director. I mean, everyone involved has really, you know, scrutinized their spending 
and if it was not for, you know, actual instructional, um, you know, they, they kind of held back. So I give a lot of credit. Um, I don't think this district has done too much of that in the past. So this, this really was a tight budget year, and, and everybody pitched in. So it was very helpful. Any other questions? No, thank you. I appreciate it. Nina, did you have questions? What work you do for this? Good. Good. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I mean, I, obviously I'm relieved to, to see this turn from a negative to a positive, and I, um, you know, I echo your congratulations to how hard everybody worked to make that happen. But I will say, you know, I still am concerned going into next year. I mean, if you look at the positions that we added, it's triple the amount that we're showing as a balance for the end of the year. And, you know, typically what we are able to do with that balance is to prepay special education so that we can absorb unexpected costs like those staff members. And, you know, if we have learned nothing else from the last couple of years, we should have learned by now that we're going to have more students than we <laughs> ever expect. You know, this is a great, great district and a great town, and they just keep on coming. And that's a wonderful thing in many ways, but it makes it hard to absorb um, given the timing of our budget cycle and all of that. So, you know, I think obviously this is much better in terms of balancing things and closing things out, but I definitely am still, you know, concerned about um, our position going into next year. It's the first time in my memory that we've had well, maybe that's not fair, but it's been a long time since we've been this low in our end-of-year balances. And so I, I know that we're in very good hands in terms of managing that money, but I just did want to – I felt like that we needed to note that as well going forward. So um, do we, we don't have to vote on this. No. Okay. It's just a presentation. All right. Very good. So um, we're wildly ahead of schedule. You did not <laughs> I know, and um, almost all of our principals are here, so why don't we skip ahead and do some quick things before, um, while we're waiting for one. Yes, we could start with Evan if you want and work our way backwards. We could do that, or we could also have Alan do the handbook first and then start. To give Lauren time? Does that, I don't care. You, what do you guys want to do? Okay. Yes. And, and she, instead of going first this year, she was planning on going. She was planning on going last. <laughs> 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 All right. So we'll give Mr. Bishop a minute to prepare if you want to do the handbook. That's it. Seems short, and we'll take it, get it right out of the way. And also, thank you for the the summary. That was easier than. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh sure. <laughs> Then reading through the whole handbook? Yeah. <laughs> well, I skimmed it. Oops. Uh, well, thank you. Um, not, not, no s real substantial changes to the handbook this year. Um, as you saw in the summary uh, document as well as the memo, um, we essentially are making some just minor adjustments. Uh, first, of it, first of which is that we're uh, changing our language around encouraging students to use student agenda agendas rather than requiring them. Uh, over the years, we've seen students use, have a preference for different types of agendas, and, uh, and, and of course, with Chromebooks, a lot of them are using Google Calendar. So uh, we encourage it, particularly at grade six, but we don't require it. Um, we are adding football, as, uh, as you know, uh, as a new sport at HMS, and that's going to be open to grades seven and eight students. So we changed the language around uh, sports opportunities for students. Um, our, the language in the handbook at present says that students will receive a consequence that will be a detention or Saturday school uh, for attendance issues. We're changing that language to saying it may include a detention Saturday school or a meeting with administration. Um, uh, let's see. We um, are um, using the same language that the high school has with regards to uh, e-cigarettes and vapes. And uh, one uh, other change that we're making uh, health-related is uh, restriction of caffeinated and energy drinks. Um, we're seeing an increasing amount of uh, caffeinated beverages coming into, into the school in the morning. And so um, we're changing some language around that in, in conversations with our nurses and uh, medical professionals. Um, so those are the major changes to the, to the handbook for 2018-2019. Excellent. Does anybody have questions? No anybody? questions. No? No. Okay. Dr. Kavanaugh, do you, uh, do you recommend the changes? I to the do recommend the changes. And I, I think that they are sort of reflective of the times and, and they make great sense. Yes. I'm happy about adding some opportunities. I'm sorry you have to add some consequences, <laughs> but I'm quite sure that that's reflective of what you're doing every day. So thank you. Um, so we just need a motion to approve the amendments made to the middle school handbooks. 
So moved. Oh, my pen ran out. Okay, second? Second. Um, was that Jen? Sorry. Yes. Motion by yep. Jen, second, second by, by Nancy. Me. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. So that is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. So should we start with Mr. Bishop and work our way backwards through the school improvement plans? Yeah, come on. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to come and talk about our school improvement plan. Um, I'm typically used to going last, and uh, so I'll have to set the bar pretty high here going first, so I'll do my best. Uh, I do want to start by thanking the uh, over 20 school council members that we have at the high school. We have a very big group uh, made up of parents, teachers, administrators, and students. Uh, and we, It is a very dedicated, uh, invested, and thoughtful group, and I think we've put together some really great goals for next year, um, as well as making some progress on our, our current goals for this year. So um, we have, I, I thought I'd just quickly talk a little bit about the progress that we've made this year on our, our SIP uh, and talk about how it relates to, to our next year's school improvement plan. So we have three goals this year. Uh, one is around curriculum alignment, one is around peer observations, and the other, other is around social emotional learning. And for next year's school improvement plan, we're going to have a continuation in two of the goals. We're going to have our continuation with the curriculum work, which I'll explain in a minute. We're adding on to our peer observation goal and tweaking it a little bit, but it's very similar to what it is this year. And we're kind of taking our social-emotional learning goal in a different direction. And we're going to focus more on transitions, which I'll talk about in a second. So our first goal this year was around aligning our curriculum and, and writing it and formatting it in a common way. Um, we uh, have been wanting to have a more fluid and transparent uh, curriculum document for, for a while now. Uh, the last time we really dug into this work was 2010. Uh, last time NIASC was, was, was visiting, um, and we created um, Atlas Rubicon, and it, 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 that was a great database, but it was very stagnant. We didn't update that very much, and so um, with the, in, you know, the influx of technology, the changing of standards, we've had quite a new staff members uh, join our staff since 2010. We felt it was, it was time to, to, to look at some of this work, um, and we dedicated quite a bit of professional development time to this throughout the course of the year, through our building-based times, through our half-day PDs and our full-day PDs. I think we've made really significant progress. Uh, I would say uh, we are going to give a survey, as you see up here on, on, this, on uh, PowerPoint, June of 2018. So we're almost there to kind of get a sense of where the, the teams are at. We focused on our core subjects. And I would say probably 85 to 90 percent are probably done with this work for, for their core class, the stage one work. They're talking about the big ideas of a unit and then kind of working backwards on, on planning that unit. Um, so when we talk about focus on next year, I think we'll probably have to finish up some of our stage one for some of our core classes in the fall, but then really focus on our elective courses and our secondary courses that the teachers teach. So that's really kind of the progress that we've made on that goal. Um, we have a peer observation goal. Um, which is also going to carry forward for next year. We feel the best form of PD really is to, to learn from each other. We have quite a bit of expertise in the building. Uh, and in my experience, you know, it's always nice to bring someone in to talk to the staff, but it's better to have your staff members work with each other. It builds a nice culture of, of collaboration. So we set a goal of having four peer observations to each semester um, within your department too and then outside of your department in two. So it's been really nice to have guidance counselors getting into classrooms, teachers getting into academic support rooms. So it's been wonderful. We've, we've, we sent out a survey about uh, two or three weeks ago just to kind of get a sense of how people are feeling about this goal. And as you can see some of the results up there, 100% um, of, the, uh, of staff members, the 103 that are, are partaking in this goal have enjoyed observing their colleagues. And it's tough to get 100% on any question that we ask. So uh, we were really excited about that. 93% uh, found the goal meaningful to their work. And 85%, which I think is the number that's exciting for me, are encouraged to try new things when it comes to activities, assessments, uh, based on the observations of others. So um, that's been a, a, a really wonderful goal for us to kind of build our PLCs, our professional learning communities, and build that culture of, of collaboration. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about what the next steps will be when we get to, to next year's. So our third goal was around uh, our social-emotional learning goal, which we've had one in our, in our SIP, and I know the other uh, principals have as well for the, for the last number of years. And it continues to be a, a challenging goal for us to kind of uh, be able to quantify the, the work that we're doing. Um, so this year was really focused on strategies around stress management, but also supporting students and making healthy decisions both inside and outside of the, of the classroom. Um, 
we sent a survey at the beginning of the year to find out what the greatest source of stress was for our students. And they, they had uh, about six or seven different choices. And not surprisingly, coursework and academic work came back. About 75% of the students picked that as their top choice. And then college and future planning was the next, I believe, 10% or 15%. So that made up 90% of the, the greatest stress. Uh, we were surprised to see that under 10% was a combination of social media, social identity, community identity, and non-school related issues. We felt those numbers might be higher going into the year. So at least we were able to kind of get that information this year in terms of what are the greatest sources of stress. And if you skip down to the third bullet on the bottom, although we, we're not going to set a goal necessarily around this, but we are going to continue to our work around examining homework. We've had quite a few staff discussions around homework. Um, what is useful homework? What is uh, meaningful homework? Um, also time management skills, you may be doing that in some of our guidance seminar classes for our freshmen and juniors and sophomores. Um, and we've started batting around the idea of an assessment calendar. So, you know, a ninth grade team or a tenth grade team of teachers would kind of put on a Google Doc when they're planning on giving their big assessments. And so everybody within the ninth grade, English, math, science, history, would kind of put their information as much as they could. So they'd be able to kind of space it out as much as you can for the kids. And so that's something that we're thinking about. Other schools do that around the area that we've heard of. So um, just preliminary discussions, but that's something that we're thinking about implementing next year. We also were, uh, in, in regards to making healthy decisions both inside and outside the classroom, we were, um, <clears throat> with our START program, I know they've come and presented a few times, it's a wonderful program. They really latched on to our mindfulness um, uh, part of this goal. And so we had a mindfulness challenge earlier this year in December. Uh, we took a whole month and challenged kids and staff to kind of take some time and be mindful throughout the course of, of the day. And uh, we kind of rang a bell at 7 a.m. and everybody kind of was supposed to take a deep breath, slow down a little bit. And uh, we got really good reviews from it. So uh, we're going to build off that uh, for next year. We also had some guest speakers come in from the One Love Foundation, uh, which is a, a presentation on uh, domestic violence. Uh, it was established by uh, Yardley Love's mother, who is the uh, college student in Virginia who was murdered right before graduation by her boyfriend. Um, and one of our former students, Kendall Burdick, uh, is part of the One Love Foundation down at Vanderbilt and helped bring it here to the high school. And we had 13 past graduates or graduates of Hopkins High School come back and run workshops with our seniors with one adult in the, in the room. So it was really powerful. We did that in December. And then we've had members of the uh, Hopkins and Cultural Diversity Alliance come and talk to our staff at some of our PD days when the middle school and high school came together. So we're, we're trying to <clears throat> bring in some speakers for our staff and students and, and build off this goal uh, when it comes for next year. So that's some of the progress that we've, we've made so far on our 2017-18 SIP. And if you start to transition to next year, like I said, this, this goal is going to seem similar, because it is. It's a two-year goal. Um, and our plan really is to um, kind of continue our work, uh, continue to use our, our, our building-based meeting time um, to create the um, curriculum that we've been talking about. You know, finish up stage one, focus on the elective courses, and then start to talk about how we're going to make it accessible to students and parents, what that's going to look like. So that's going to be some of the work that we're going to do, uh, and I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to, to finish that by the end of next year. In regards to the peer observation goal, oh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry. this is just another strategies and activities in regards to, um, you want to go to the next slide for me, Carol, sorry. We're just going to utilize more um, uh, time in, uh, in PLCs. I know that Hiller days are, are, the students love the Hiller days. They get to sleep late. I don't know if the rest of the buildings love it with the traffic or, or the people in the community. But what the staff is doing during that time is doing the curriculum work and getting together in PLCs and taking that 50 minutes that they get extra to work in, in, in pairs, which is really nice or sometimes in, in three people. So it's also another benefit of the Hiller days. So. This is our, uh, our second goal. It's the peer observation goal. So part of that survey that we sent out where we got those great results, um, staff also kind of put comments on what can we do next year to improve this goal or do we want to continue with this goal? And, and almost everybody on staff wanted to. But they wanted to have it be more focused and they wanted to be able to <clears throat> kind of maybe find an area that they want to see someone um, who does maybe frames a lesson well or consolidates a lesson well or, or, or really has a, does a wonderful job of engaging the students. So if you look halfway through the left-hand side on, on the green box, uh, we're going to use the educator evaluation rubric and staff is going to select an area to, to help focus their observations, maybe an area that they do well in an area that they want to focus on. And we're going to take that list on our summer retreat with our SMLs and start to kind of create a document where teachers can actually look when they're free and a topic that they might want to see that they'll, they'll be able to sign up for. 
Uh, so we're excited about that. This year it's just kind of getting into each other's classroom, creating that culture. Next year it's going to be a little bit more focused, and there will be kind of a feedback portion of it too. Uh, staff will be expected to, once they do an observation, maybe have some conversations with that teacher that they saw and give some feedback. We're not doing that currently. Um, and we also felt that maybe four observations might be a little bit too much with all that's going on, so we're going to reduce the amount that we're expecting, but have them give more feedback and more targeted. So that's, that's the, the essence of the goal for, for next year. Yeah, and that just gives it a little bit more um, in terms of how we're going to set it up. We're going to develop a tool for these observations for our staff during our SML retreat in the summer. We're going to come up with that um, kind of schedule, and then once the year starts, staff will uh, do their self-reflection like they always do when it comes to the rubric and pick those areas that they want to model. And then we'll, uh, there's an EdCamp-style PD um, where we have our staff members running different workshops. And so that'll be another opportunity for people to go see different teaching strategies uh, from our staff members that they, they're able to participate in that. So we've done that for the last few years, which has been nice. And then our third and final goal, so um, we've we sent out a survey uh, as we have NIAS coming in, in 2020, and you have to send out a survey a few years ahead of time to kind of get some information about how people think it, uh, things are going at the high school. And with our school council, a, a lot of what we talked about was the transitions. And we felt that that was an area when you talk about social-emotional learning where we could do a better job of, of kids coming into the school, whether it be 8th to ninth grade or tra uh, transfer students. Um, and I think we do a good job socially, for the most part, with our Unite program and advisory when it comes to the transition. But academically, I think we could do a little bit of a better job. So I think Mr. Keller will probably talk about it a little bit as well in his presentation. But we're going to try to co combine our school councils a little bit more and create more vertical meeting time for the high school and middle school to talk a little bit more about the academic bridge and try to, uh, and try to improve that. Um, we've had over 100 students transfer into the high school since September. Um, and so we feel that that's a, a group of, of students that we want to focus on and make sure that that transition is smooth for them. Um, we have created a club called Ho uh, Hello Hillers, which is great. Uh, it's a group of students who have transferred here, it, uh, but there's also been other students that have just joined up on the club, um, and they're serving as mentors for our transfer students, somewhat like Unite serves it for the ninth grade. So that's been a nice touch, and we're going to kind of build off that for next year. But also we wanted to, not only with students transferring in or coming to the high school, but also leaving. So the transition in and transition out of the high school, we wanted to get more information on how we can improve. And so part of this goal, in addition to the 8th to ninth grade transition and transfers, we also want to do a better job of connecting to our alumni after they've graduated from the high school. Maybe send them a survey, continue to kind of have communication with them to find out what went well, did, were they prepared, are there things that we could do better uh, for future classes. And so we've already started to kind of communicate with some of our current seniors on ways to gather their emails to be able to, to communicate with them. Um, and maybe we'll send out a survey sometime around Thanksgiving when maybe they're all back here and, and just kind of get a sense of how things are going and any information that they may have. And um, Part of our, uh, our last school council meeting, which, the, uh, which Dan and Young spoke about, we're going to craft some uh, survey questions for some senior parents about how their experience was. We're also going to survey ninth grade parents this year to find out how their experience was, and then also try to get some information from our transfer parents, just to kind of get a sense from them as well, just to um, improve that communication. Um, we're also going to offer maybe some principal coffees for transfer families, um, and we're uh, thinking about adding a, an additional ninth grade parent night. Uh, we have a back to school night in September. Uh, we might tack on the first 30 minutes, maybe from 6.30 to 7, a, a, a in, you know, voluntary ninth grade parent night to where we're bringing parents of high school students to come and talk to the parents. So maybe I'll open it up and, and welcome them, but I, I want them to hear from some of the parents about their experience. And so those are some of the things that were brought through the survey, but also through school council. So <coughs> the goal will be really focused on <coughs> trying to make the experience better for kids transferring in or coming to the high school, but also as they leave. So uh, it's a goal we're excited about. Uh, there's some work to be done this year before we, we, we jump into this goal next year, but uh, that's the plan for our May 16th school council meeting. So, And those are our, our goals for, for next year. Excellent. Does anybody have questions? Comments? I liked um, in your third goal, the brown box on the right-hand side said something about how you judge your schools, not by um, graduation rate. I can't remember the details yeah. of it, yep. but yeah. the quote jumped out at me, and so I just wanted to tell you. So, oh, there it is. Yeah. Bottom, yeah, last paragraph. Bottom one, yeah. Um, steps taken, um, whether or not the kids think that we've done what we need to do to get them to succeed, which is awesome. Yep. I think that's great. And I really like how you've brought a lot of people together and, you know, giving the folks that are in the trenches, like the parents, mm -hmm. 
to, to tell the story as opposed yeah. to trying to just dictate information because I think it's an awesome idea. Yeah, that's one thing we're, we're, we're trying to improve is our, yeah. we survey the kids quite a bit, uh, probably usually at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, and end of the year, um, and we just started trying to survey the parents a little bit more. I think that's going to be something that we're going to do a little bit more consistently yeah. next year. That's, yeah. that's great. It's important to get their feedback. Very good. I also love, uh, and I think I said this last year, so I, I hate to repeat myself too much, but the, uh, the work has continued with the transitions and that that continues to be a goal between yeah. uh, on both ends. And I know that that is also in the middle school as well, but the transitions have been so important, but historically I think have been more challenging, and I think that we're getting in the right direction. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think this is great, and I, you know, I just am always struck every time, you know, we sort of go through all the hustle and bustle, and we sort of start to wind down at this time of the year, and get, I don't know, it's just a nice time to stop and reflect, and I think all of you do such a great job of really continually reflecting on all of your programs and how you can strengthen them to meet the students that are in front of you at the time. There are some major differences even in the time that my kids have been here and I don't think I'm as old as I probably am but you know I and I just I think that's just really a, a healthy sign of um, evolution and and responsiveness to the kids and what their needs are which change all the time so I, I think and I know I'm going to end up saying the same thing to all of you because I, I saw that in all of the all of the presentations but I think it's really well done and and mm -hmm. a lot of exciting stuff ahead so yeah. thank you yeah. I just want to commend the high school on the PLCs and PR observation piece because I think that you have to have great psychological safety among your mm -hmm. faculty to make something like this work so kudos to all of you for establishing that um, I think that kind of work is the gold standard so yeah. it's thank great I appreciate it very exciting mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Oops, sorry. We didn't give you a lot of leg room there. Yeah, yeah you really don't. <laughs> <laughs> we are the closer this way today. Oh, welcome back. Thank you. We do see. <clears throat> well, thank you. I um, would echo what uh, Evan said in terms of the uh, commitment uh, from members of school council. It's a important uh, it's important work obviously putting together the school improvement plan talking about areas for strengths and areas areas of strength and areas for improvement and uh, parents and uh, the teachers that are part of it and uh, two years ago we added students uh, after having a joint school council meeting with the high school and having a conversation with the high school team and so we added students and they've been uh, tremendous contributors on, on the school council so in fact we actually added a bonus meeting uh, this year they were so uh, interested in, <laughs> in uh, continuing on the work and even some of the things that we talked about as areas for improvement that didn't make it into the school improvement plan um, still wanting to have those conversations about ways that we can work on some things so uh, it's it's good work so um, so we'll start obviously talking about um, this year and the 2017-2018 uh, school improvement plan. Um, our first goal was around instructional practices and um, establishing some consistent instructional practices uh, within the school, meeting the learning needs of all students. And um, I, you know, my, it's been my observation and feeling uh, for you know being in the middle school uh, for many years now that uh, we have some outstanding instructional practices. Um, that aren't necessarily consistent. I think that our students could, could benefit tremendously from uh, kind of standardizing some of those instructional practices. So um, last year when, uh, with Dr. Kavanaugh bringing in SRSD, the Self-Regulated Strategies Development work that is happening uh, pre-K through uh, eight, um, we rolled that out in, in English, social studies, and special education, and then continued uh, this past year in working with our social studies department. So now we've got those three departments really uh, working hard on SRSD and, and uh, making sure that students are using those consistent practices, and, and we're seeing tremendous benefits uh, from that. Um, so I, I talked about those three departments. Science is also using something really similar. Um, and I know that's consistent at the high school as well with claim evidence reasoning and uh, and so it's very similar to what's happening. So students are getting consistent practices in writing uh, pre-K through through eight and then uh, be able to kind of um, break free from that format a little bit when they get to the high school level. So uh, we've done a lot of work in that. Um, we, um, last year, uh, long working with the Hopkins School and, um, and trying to develop a program that best meet the needs for uh, many of our students with language-based uh, struggles, established a team at grade six who were skilled and trained in language-based strategies. Um, and then we rolled that up to seventh and eighth grade. So we now have a team at each 
grade level six, seven, and eight, who have um, who have strength and practices in consistent instructional strategies and, and addressing students with language-based needs. Um, and so this was the first year having a team at each grade level with that. Uh, we have a literacy coach, um, and this is uh, her second year. Last year, um, the literacy coach um, had made some inroads um, with the staff and 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 helping them. Uh, in their classroom, helping uh, science, social studies, and math teachers, and certainly English teachers, on ways that they could improve the literacy instruction and practice in their classroom. Um, this year, we actually assigned her to teams and uh, and put her on six-week rotations, and so she rotated through each team and would be meeting with them during their team meetings uh, and professional learning community meetings to find out what's happening and how she can best support the different classes and that's been tremendously beneficial. Uh, she's also been uh, delivered professional development throughout the year at our early release days and at our staff development days and just uh, reminding staff about how we can best support students literacy needs. Um, and then finally kind of going back to the second bullet point up there about the language based strategies. Uh, this year um, we uh, utilized a consultant uh, who's an expert in language based strategies to actually teach and work with our entire staff. So. Um, during early release days, um, she came in and worked with our entire staff because um, even though we're still going to have a team at each grade level who, is, who essentially are experts in language-based strategies, a lot of that stuff is beneficial to every single student. And so, um, to, you know, uh, what she talked about is having some consistent um, strategies and organization of time, materials, and information for students. And so, you know, we talked. She talked about things like students should always have a pen or a pencil on their hand. We shouldn't just watch, uh, even though we might be watching a film on X that supports what we're learning. Just having students watch that is is not a good uh, instructional practice. Always having a pen and pencil and writing down some of the things and, and a, with a purpose in mind for for viewing. So, uh, two column notes are something that we've talked about as a staff and employing those uh, school wide. So that was that is goal number one. Uh, goal number two was around um, organizing and analyzing results from a variety of assessments, adjusting practice, and implementing in interventions and uh, enhancements. Uh, you'll see that this goal um, is revised slightly, um, but really carries through. We still have a, we still have a substantial amount of work to do. In, in interventions and enrichments as a school. But some of the things that we accomplished this year is uh, we've been meeting in professional learning communities for many years. Uh, when our students um, go to related arts classes, the academic teachers uh, uh, either meet as a team uh, of English, Science, Social Studies, and Foreign Language and Special Education, or they meet in professional learning communities. So it's the three science teachers, the three math teachers, the three English teachers. So um, a lot of the work that they do uh, revolves around curriculum. Um, and we added this year, um, you know, and um, a, a focus on instructional or uh, on assessment data. So looking at the assessment data, how can we best support students? What students? Uh, what additional information are students needing? What additional instruction are students needing uh, from that assessment data? Um, we added the star reading assessment this year that gave us a much better look at how students are performing, areas that they need uh, improvement on. Um, and it gives us a very good prediction of um, how they will do on MCAS. It's, it's a great, it's, it's um, closely aligned with MCAS. Dr. Kavanaugh has helped uh, our teachers extensively with, uh, with that data. And, um, and ultimately, um, as I mentioned earlier, professional learning community meetings, um, uh, evaluating evidence of progress toward those essential learning goals and, and how students are progressing uh, along the way. Uh, our third goal was around uh, social emotional needs of students. And um, in our, at our February professional development, Deb Pinto, one of our PE teachers, um, is, tr is, a str is a trained uh, provider of uh, having um, districts and communities ultimately looking at how their wellness uh, programs um, from the beginning of the day to the end of the school day are aligned. And it's not just looking at your PE programs or your health programs, but it's looking at are we giving students enough um, um, beha uh, not behavior, enough um, breaks in the day, activity, opportunities to engage in activity as opposed to just sitting all day long. Um, so she led a group at our February PD day uh, of district um, teachers and uh, uh, nurses talking about uh, things that we can look, look for, ways that we can improve um, and enhance our instruction um, to ensure that um, there's proper activity uh, involved in the day. 
Uh, I've been working this past year with our guidance staff to ensure that um, they are adhering to our state and national standards for service delivery. Uh, essentially, you know, the, the standards suggest or, or declare that 80% of guidance counselors' time should be in direct or indirect services. And ultimately what we mean by that is meeting with teams, talking about students, uh, working directly with students, uh, delivering curriculum, as opposed to, you know, doing duties uh, throughout the day. So, we've, uh, you know, our, our guidance counselors used to be responsible for organizing MCAS, and we've taken that responsibility away from them so they can be more focused on, on student needs. Um, and they used to do a lot of lunch duty, which we've taken away as well, um, to the chagrin of my assistant principals. But um, we've also uh, reestablished vertical meetings uh, that we haven't had for quite some time. So this year we had uh, vertical meetings between grades eight and nine. And, um, and then the other thing that we talked a lot about last year and the past couple of years really is, uh, as you know, we're on teams at the middle school. And, um, and over the years, uh, we've done some things, um, you know, whether it be um, math leveling, uh, where kids are going off team for math that has kind of eaten into that team identity. And so, you know, I might have 15 kids that are on this team that go over to uh, another math teacher. So when, when the team meets and talks about their kids, not everybody, not all five teachers have all of those kids on the team. And so we've tried to bring back some team building activities to really help with that team identity. And so some of the teams have uh, done some extensive work this year around uh, team building, whether it be going outside and doing some activities or doing some trivia events where they learn something about the teachers or uh, other people in the building. And so um, so that's, that's, those were our updates on the current school year. So off to 2018-2019, um, our first goal uh, is around uh, establishing and revising our curriculum uh, to, by ensuring uh, alignment to new and revised state and national standards, uh, and within that, identifying the skills and knowledge that all students will have in each unit of study. Um, so, you know, we've done this work uh, a long time. We had this work in Atlas. Uh, we stopped using Atlas because Google Docs ultimately we feel like is a, uh, that's, what, there's, that's where teachers are and they're using that constantly. And so we feel like Google Docs offer, offers us uh, a, a much richer environment and much easier uh, since they're there anyway. So, um, so some of the things that we're working on within that uh, are establishing the written curriculum uh, for each uh, subject area. Um, social studies teachers, uh, there's a new social study, history and social science curriculum that's currently in draft mode until uh, June of 2018. Uh, so social studies teachers have begun looking at the draft mode uh, and they will throughout the year uh, begin to unpack those standards for implementation in 2019-2020. And our science and technology teachers. So we have our, obviously our science teachers, but we also have our engineering teacher, uh, along with Doug Scott, who's the SML uh, for engineering, working together in collaboration to, to determine where there's gaps and overlaps between science and engineering. Um, but then also just um, la this past year, uh, we rolled out science into grade six. So we're looking at the data on how we're doing with that. We'll look at um, uh, performance on common, or excuse me, on local assessments on how students did in grade six and make adjustments and then in grade seven, eight next year we'll be rolling out those new science standards to all students. Our second goal revolves around um, an academic intervention system that is fluid, flexible, and meets the needs of each child. So this connects to last year's goal around an intervention system. Um, you know, we have uh, talked about RTI and we implemented Hiller blocks and uh, we continue to get closer, I think, to that vision that we have of being a strong school that offers um, flexible intervention and enrichment throughout the day. Um, but we, we know that we still have uh, su substantial uh, work to do. Um, so our strategies and activities to get there, um, you know, what we're going to be working on is making sure that uh, teachers of each course develop as they're, as they're, you know, relating back to goal number one, as they're writing the curriculum or revising their curriculum, making sure that they're also weaving in uh, resources and instructional uh, strategies for students who need enrichment or, or remediation. So the first day of teaching a unit, uh, we may learn that there's a couple students in the class that already know the content. Um, and, and so rather than them sitting through 15 lessons, uh, there's some enrichment pieces that we can, that we can offer to them. Um, and so that's important that we do that right from, right from the get-go as we're, as we're developing that curriculum or revising that curriculum. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, as we've brought things into the middle school, um, such as Hiller Block, uh, such as different in, uh, remediation programs, um, it's not clear about uh, what belongs to what tier. So essentially in an RTI period, there are three tiers. There's tier one, what every child gets. 
uh, tier two, what some children who are struggling get, and tier three, uh, those students who continue to struggle in tier two uh, who need some uh, intensive interventions. And so one of our things that we learned that we do, we, make, we think uh, as administrators and, and as our leadership team, we have it in our heads that we need to be clear about it and, and get that on paper so that everybody's clear about uh, the different things we offer at each tier. Um, and uh, professional development is going to be a big part of that. So that's, that's going to be our focus next year for professional development um, to meet varied student needs. Um, and continuing, use, uh, continuing our use of data to ensure that we're meeting our students' needs. We've begun work and working with teachers on uh, looking at data. It's certainly not their area of expertise, um, but it's, it's continuing to support them in, in understanding how they best can use the data to support uh, and adjust their practice. Next year, we're adding uh, literacy in intervention to support students in reading. For years, we've had a math intervention class, um, and we will continue to offer that. And we're finally um, uh, excited to be able to offer some literacy intervention classes uh, for students who need some support in reading. And uh, we've had co-teaching for a substantial amount of time, but we've added uh, teachers uh, over the years who have not received professional development and co-teaching, and essentially we've kind of just said, you're a co-teacher, go co-teach. And, and uh, for the most part, it's worked out, but we have realized that uh, we need to establish roles and responsibilities and, and help people understand uh, what it is precisely when we talk about co-teaching. And finally, um, goal number three. Um, so this uh, continue, is a continuation of uh, last year's goal around social-emotional learning, um, looking to meet our students' social-emotional um, needs. And so we have some specific things that we're highlighting. Uh, Evan already talked about um, transition to the high school and uh, feeling uh, pretty strongly that uh, there's a lot of things that we can continue to improve, uh, one of which uh, is, is uh, course recommendations. And so we've begun some work with that. Again, working with Dr. Kavanaugh and Evan and Lee Greco at the high school uh, and our teachers, uh, we've begun some of that work that will continue uh, into next year. Uh, we've already scheduled uh, a joint school council meeting as, as we had done, I think, last year uh, with the high school. And we're continuing to have a vertical meeting for teachers at the middle school and high school to meet and uh, not to just talk about transition, but to talk about writing uh, and to talk about other uh, um, areas of ex ex other expectations um, and how they might be different and try and ease that transition. Um, Evan also talked about this for students new to the school. Um, you know, going back to instructional practices, I think that we, for the most part, do a pretty good job when students or staff are new to the school. Um, but w that's something that we want to solidify and have a process. And so we're working on putting together essentially a, um, uh, a packet of materials for students who come new from uh, when they register after the start of the school year um, so that the guidance counselor can go through that. We can send that packet home with, with, uh, with the child uh, that welcomes them to school but talks about some of the things that they, don't, they, don't get, they haven't had the opportunity to learn about because they weren't here at the beginning of the year to go through the orientation, to go through the back to school night. So uh, that's something we're working at. And the same is true of, of staff. We've had several staff that have started, whether it be a long-term, uh, you know, a person who goes out for the remainder of the year and it's a full year sub um, or a variety of things. And sometimes we make assumptions and don't um, catch them up on all the things that we feel like um, we should be doing. So uh, that's something that we've begun to work on. Uh, as I mentioned when, we ha when I was here for program of studies, uh, we are beginning a guidance seminar for students in grade six, uh, and that will introduce all students to our guidance department and all of our guidance counselors. Uh, we've had a lot of talk this past year as a staff about advisory, and as you know, there's an advisory at the high school, and um, we, uh, were, we had a presenter come in and talk to us as a staff about advisory, and we're... Um, uh, buying in as a staff to the need for an advisory uh, and so we're, we've put together a task force that's going to be meeting over the summer and to be um, building our uh, curriculum for implementation in the 2019-2020 school year. And um, and then, you know, I talked about um, the tiers of intervention in academic, so an art, uh, academic RTI, um, and we want to do the same thing in, with behavioral, um, so students with behavioral needs and figure out what all students will get, whether that be the guidance seminar in tier one, uh, and then what some kids who are struggling behaviorally um, in class will get in tier two, and students who continue to struggle and need more intensive interventions uh, in tier three. So we want to have both an academic uh, intervention uh, pyramid uh, as well as a, a behavioral pyramid. 
Um, and we've talked a lot, and we've had some parents and some teachers and some students really excited about starting a school store next year. And uh, so we're um, preparing to um, roll that out. We've got a parent who is, um, uh, well, I don't know about excited, who has been dragged into building uh, a, a kind of a kiosk that um, uh, we're hoping to, to launch uh, next school year and having some students get some experience in uh, merchandising and, uh, and running a business as well as some of our students in our intensive special needs programs having an opportunity to be involved in that. So that's an exciting initiative that we're moving forward on. And the last thing is expanding leadership opportunities. And, and really what I mean by that is um, establishing a little bit more around uh, leadership curriculum. Um, the uh, school walkout this year um, uh, was um, kind of a notice to me in that uh, I think that we offer kids a lot of opportunities in student council. We have a, a student advisory. Um, we have Ignite. Um, but I don't think that we do any formal instruction around leadership. And so I, I, reflecting on myself, I run the student advisory program, and we spend a lot of time talking about things that are great at the middle school, things that could be improved. And, you know, for instance, you know, one such example is we talked about the cafeteria, and, um, and there was some feedback about the cafeteria and allowing kids to be on both sides of the salad bar and, and doing some different things. And I then went to Kevin Welch, and uh, we made the changes. And after, we're, after the student walkout day where um, I felt like our, uh, it could have been led a little bit better, I said to myself, I think I'm... I can do a better job because I'm the one that's actually doing all these things rather than having the kids. Uh, and rather instead of meeting with Kevin Welch and the kids and them talking about it, uh, I was doing the heavy lifting there. So that's, that's something that uh, as an administrative team that we're talking about, ways that we can uh, support students and build their leadership skills. And that's uh, our school improvement plan for next year. Thank you. Does anybody have questions, comments? Fantastic again. Thank you. Great, great job. Same comment I made to Evan about I really do appreciate all the, the thought that goes into transitions, whether it's for transfer students or for kids coming in from the fifth grade up to the sixth grade and then on to that has been really noticed over the past few years, but I think particularly going forward. Okay, thank you. A lot of good things going on there. Thanks. I have to say the school store is that's just such a great idea. I really love that. Um, that's just a, such a good opportunity for all of the kids. Um, I, th I think that's fantastic. I know it's a small thing in comparison to all yeah. these slides, but um, <clears throat> but it really jumped out mm -hmm. at me. And honestly, I actually think if you just go back to the goal two, I think the summary that you had there um, just really says it all, right? Um, yeah. and, and particularly at the middle school. So it's very simple and very profound at the same time, and the focus is fantastic. So. Um, you know, again, thank you for always being so reflective and responsive to the needs of the kids that are in front of you. I think that's great. And I'm thinking as I'm continuing to listen <clears throat> to all of these, what a great launching pad all of these will be as you guys start your work on the strategic plan, um, building the next one next year, um, just because it's such a great capture of where we are and what already um, we're looking forward to. I just think it'll be a great tool. Um, for all of you to use in that process as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. And thank you for the work you're doing with differentiation. I think yes. that that has come so far. Yeah. And it's really exciting to see us getting kids exactly what they need. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Hello. My shoes are Oh, no. Oh, nice. Sorry. You didn't have to tell. We wouldn't have known. <laughs> and I just want to point out before you um, go out and get your Hopkins Middle School gear, we have had a school store since the winter. So <laughs> I'm pleased to Excellent. offer you Hopkins water bottles before you purchase your <laughs> middle school bottles. It um, has been a great addition that was school driven by students in our building as well to have Fantastic. Hopkins gear. So awesome. if you like your water bottle or pencil, I'll make sure you get one. <laughs> or stress ball, we have those too. I think Olivia we all need that. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Unlike um, my predecessors at the high school and middle school, we don't have students on our school council, but we do have a variety of teachers and parents, and it's been a fantastic group this year that's really 
driven me with a lot of questions and we've had a lot of dialogue about our current plan, looking at progress, and then thinking about ways we want to move forward. And so I'm really appreciative. They did a lot of work to help drive where we're going in the next year, we hope. So if you look at our first goal from this past year, it was really part of a two-year literacy goal. Um, the first year of that goal, like Alan spoke to, we were focused on the implementation of SRSD. And the professional development related to that and trying to implement building-wide um, implementation so that every teacher is using that strategy of instruction was really the focus of the first year. This past year, we've expanded that to not only continue looking at the assessments related to writing, but we noticed that there was a real need in targeted work for reading comprehension at our grade level, especially around inferential thinking. And we've worked all year to improve our guided reading instruction. We've been using, using the um, Fontes and Pinnell um, literacy continuum and working with teachers with that. The other piece that's been really helpful as we've dove down into our practice on Reader's Workshop is the addition, it's not really an addition, we repurposed a reading position from the past that in the past was just driven for intervention. She is now operating our new reading specialist, works part-time as a teacher doing, delivering a um, level literacy intervention program, but also works as a coach, and that's been a real marked change in our building, to have somebody who has not only been a classroom teacher, but also a learning specialist, has been a co-teacher, to use those skills that she's developed in all those different roles, and as a reading specialist, now supporting her peers to implement really strong practices in Reader's Workshop. So that's been a, a really wonderful addition this year and I see a lot of changes and the staff just talking about how much they value that collaboration with a coach. It's been really wonderful to see. So we have definitely established over this past year some really explicit expectations around universal progress monitoring tools and using common assessment data sheets, which really drives a lot of our conversations. They're very targeted at our PLC meetings and also building-based meetings. And it's allowed us to improve our instruction, I believe, and adjust instruction to meet the needs of learners. Since we really do operate with a reader's workshop model, we're delivering targeted reading instruction from our highest readers at level Z down to our most struggling readers, you know, sometimes starting off the year at um, DC in that range. So we really do have quite a range. Um, the collected data and feedback from our teachers has led to our literacy goal for the next improvement plan, and it's really a focus on literary analysis, a very important skill, and one that they really delve a lot into as we get into that very deep inferential thinking and inferential comprehension work. And also, we really want to move forward as, from our SRSD work into discrete writing skills, for example, using dialogue in our writing. And finally, you'll see when we get to the next, the, the first goal for this year, a refinement of our grading practices in ELA. Our second goal for the 2017-18 school year was on improving social-emotional learning practices. You've heard that mentioned by my predecessors as well. Uh, this was a no, new goal area this past year, and we really prioritized tier one, universal strategies, and tier two interventions in the area of social emotional learning. One of our biggest successes, we feel, is the development of BEST. It's our behavior, behavioral emotional support team, and it includes counselors, our nurse, behavior analyst, um, team chair, administration, psychologist. We, re we meet um, weekly, at least several of us, every single week meet. Teachers can refer students with concerns or classrooms with concerns. And based on that, we consult with teachers. We send staff in to do observations and work and collaborate with teams of teachers at PLCs. And then also sometimes it results in tier two supports for individual students or groups of students. So we've been really happy with that collaborative approach, whether it's a building crisis around emotional needs or behavioral needs, or a classroom teacher coming to us and saying, we have a lot of kids not treating each other nicely, what can I do? 
and then having certain staff members from this group collaborate and work with those teachers. So it's been a, a different approach rather than saying our counselors are going to handle this person or our psychologist is going to work with this one. Our behavior specialist is going to work with this child. It's, it's more all of us coming together to problem solve and then figure out who is the best person or people to work and support the teachers and students. Um, the other thing that we've really focused on is differentiated learning opportunities for our staff around the stressors that our students face. So working with teachers on things like our core values. We've really beefed up our work on picture books and resources for teachers to talk to students about the core values that we implement each month. We've done work with the behavior code, including teachers who have done it as a book study throughout the whole year and implementing the strategies from Jessica Minahan. And the last area that teachers could choose to participate in over the course of the year were mindfulness practices, not only learning about them, learning about the importance of them, but then working to implement them in their classrooms. So teachers self-selected one of those groups to be part of. As a full building, we also implemented yoga workshops, and that was fantastic. Teachers learning how to deliver classroom yoga in your classroom, which is really neat to see, going along with all of this work, recognizing we can't always say we're going to decrease stress, but how do you effectively manage that stress you're feeling? And so we feel very good about those pieces that we've already put into place, that strong emphasis on social emotional learning has definitely become an ongoing discussion point. We implemented a social emotional learning team with teachers who met regularly after school to talk about how we were doing. They developed surveys for students and then have been doing a lot of work analyzing not only those surveys, but what are we seeing in practice? Where are the areas of concern? And all of that has shown we believe there's been a lot of improvement in building climate and culture, not only amongst the staff, but amongst the students, feeling like this is a, you know, it's their third transition in Hopkinton usually, um, but how do we make Hopkins experience unique and special as your third school that you're starting at nine years old? So that's been a really big goal and we feel proud of the work we've done in that area. Um, I think the surveys show that we still have some work to do and I'll get to that as I get into my new goal for this year. Okay. So our first goal for the 2018 and 19 school year was really based on analyzing the current SIP strategies and benchmarks and recognizing as a school council that we really wanted to have three areas to focus on, literacy, social emotional, and math. So this first area is really a very much revised literacy goal where our focus is going to be on the modification of our scope and sequence for writing and reading, but also the refinement of our practices from the, the past two years. But more importantly, we really are going to be working together as a, a staff to develop these lessons in discrete writing I mentioned earlier. SRSD doesn't focus as much on that area. We did some preliminary professional development with Dr. Kavanaugh this past year and um, are excited to continue that work in this area. Our rubrics for SRSD really talk about these discrete writing skills. Now that teachers are implementing fully the, the main routines for SRSD, we need to get and target things like word choice, editing skills. So we look forward to doing more of that work this past year. Going along with that work with SRSD, we've done some work revising our standards of proficiency. And the next piece that we really need to tackle is our report card standards. We can't change the frameworks, which is really what our standards-based report card is, is built upon, but making it more meaningful for, for parents. That was something that was really coming out of our school council. They kept saying, we don't understand where our kid is. You know, this two, this three is meaningless to us. So that's something we're ready to tackle as a staff. Now that we feel comfortable what we're doing as we're grading writing and informational writing or narrative writing, to be able to explain to parents, these are your child's targeted goals. This is where they are. This is what fourth grade writing looks like and should look like. This is where your child's are. And these are the discrete skills, areas that they need to focus on. So that's the next part. C communicating what we've learned to families the children have come pretty far. They are setting learning targets and learning goals. But as you'll see in my next goal, that self-awareness <laughs> is a big area of focus for 9 and 10-year-olds. 
So with this first goal in literacy, um, which was in my full SIP that I presented to you, there's five benchmarks for literacy and the areas of focus implementing SRSD across curricular areas. Alan spoke to this. We, too, are implementing it this year. A lot of our social studies assessments are implementing informational writing using the strategies of TIED and TIED organizers. Um, we also use CER for science, so a lot of what students are doing in our building build right into what Allen's building is doing at the middle school. We will continue working on adjustments to reading instruction and then finally that improvements to grading practices. So the second goal area is um, once again social emotional. Like the other buildings, we continue to find this to be a critical piece. If we don't have students who are excited, and feeling part of a school community, they're not available for learning. So our focus this year is really on core competencies that we've identified as need areas for our students at fourth and fifth grade. This, as I said, was built on both survey data, we've interviewed students, surveyed students, and then as a CELT team, looking at where are our children falling short. And the two areas of core competencies we've identified are self-awareness and self-management. Self-management goes along with those self-regulation skills, but self-awareness, how am I doing compared to my peers? Nine and 10-year-olds have a hard time understanding that. So in order to um, really work on that, we need to look at our report cards in that area, which I'll get to in the strategies. The other area we really want to focus on is establishing a safe and inclusive learning environment for all learners. We've done a lot of work about differing learning styles, but given the diversity of our population and also a changing and quickly growing population, um, I believe Evan spoke about the numbers of students at Hopkins in two grades this year between summer and the school year. We're well over 70 students. Just from the school year start, we're over 45. So that's a lot of students who have been added monthly, daily. Um, and they are a changing population. So looking specifically at areas of language, cultural, and socio socioeconomic diversity, um, are the things that the staff would like to tackle as far as cultural proficiency. I think it's a, a worthy area for us to focus on as staff. So the strategies and activities associated with that, two primary benchmarks that I've described. Um, the first one is really looking at tiered interventions. So what are we going to do with students and, and improve that social emotional learning curriculum that we've implemented. The second benchmark is again tied to our grading practices. So we have a standards based report card, but there's a section in that report card tied to personal development. So thinking about those areas we've identified of need, self-management and self-awareness, we'd like to revise our practices for personal development, which is that first section on the elementary per report card. And it focuses on classroom community skills and approaches to learning. And what we hope to do is establish routines that encourage goal setting, assessment and monitoring tools, but also structures to provide ongoing feedback to students and their families. So that children understand why am I getting the always or often or sometimes. It's pretty meaningless to a lot of children. So we want to start building in opportunities for children to reflect on that themselves. And we're hoping that that will build self-awareness and then work on that monitoring with them. The last area is a new area for us at Hopkins this year, and it's the area of mathematics. Um, this year, as a district math leadership team, it was decided to move away from our current math curriculum resources in Pearson and Vision Math. The new resources we are adopting are from Eureka Math, which is developed by the Engage New York Math team. And we feel that as a building, the adoption lends itself to a pretty thorough review of our current math scope and sequence. We've already begun this work with some support from Dr. Cavanaugh in terms of funding. Our, we've had teams of teacher leaders at each grade level working to start revising the scope and sequences that we use at each grade level. 
but that work has really just begun, mapping out the sequence that we're going to start using next year. So our goal over the next two years is to have a published pacing guide along with common assessments utilizing these Eureka resources. I've learned from the literacy goal of the last two years that doing something like this in one year isn't realistic. The first year really needs to be focused on establishing resource guides for the teachers. So we're going to use digital math resource guides and a new scope and sequence and lay that out. That second year is saying we're in full implementation, but also communicating to families. As I shared, we're really just getting to that point with literacy, especially in writing. So I feel to say we're going to do this stage one right at the beginning of starting off with Eureka seems a little too lofty. So take two years to really get to the point where we're addressing some of those needs in the report card. Um, so first step would be to roll out and improve the learning of our staff about these resources from Eureka. It looks very different than um, our current envision in many ways. We don't have workbooks anymore. The teacher resources look different. So helping teachers understand how to use those and establishing what our map is going to look like. And then that second year is going to really be looking more at our grading practices associated with this and make sure that our common assessments are all in place. Um, we know that in 2011, when the new math frameworks came out, that was when this district really adopted Envision for the first time. There was a lot of concern at the elementary level. You know, you have generalists who teach all subjects. How are we going to tackle this in addition to teaching writing and reading, workshop, and science and social studies? This time around, what I've told my staff is, you already know the math frameworks. You know how to teach the math. What we need to do is we're adjusting the resources. That's still a lot for teachers to take on when you have your workbook you're used to going to for your homework, and now all those resources have changed. But the lessons themselves, the math behind it, distributive property is still distributive property. Division is still division. So that's where we're hoping to go at Hopkins in the next year, it's two Thank years. You. Thank you. Does anybody have questions or great, questions? Great job. Thank you. Yeah, no questions. I think that's great. I, you know, it's fun for me is because it's now been two years since I've had a child in your building. Just to see how much has changed in two years is sort of fun. Oh. Just all the social and emotional learning stuff seems like it's really taken off, even from where it already was. So, thank you. Kudos. Yeah, I mean, I'll, equally well done. These are all great, and I just, in particular, maybe it's minutia, but the things that just jump out to me are, you know, helping the kids learn to sort of reflect on their own behavior and their own sort of personal accountability and planning and goal setting I think is fantastic and I just loved what you said about the stress that you know we can't protect our children from stress but it is a life skill to learn how to manage it because life Sorry. is stressful um, so I, I, that just happened to jump out at me as well so thank you very much it's really well done Yes, and thank work. you to your teachers because they have been faced with a lot of new things, whether it was moving to, you know, Eureka Math or uh, SRSD and now adopting the discrete skills. They've, they're constantly on the treadmill, and I appreciate the work. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very everybody. much. So while well, we're transitioning, can I ask, this seems like a different format than we're, how we've done it in the past. Yeah. You, I love it. I do too. I was uh, actually going to ask if we could put this on the website because yeah. sure. I think this is so easily accessible, yeah. I mean, understandable for parents. Yeah. Um, a little bit more than our format with all the... Well, full disclosure, yeah. we thought we didn't really have a lot of time for all of us to get together, so if we created a template with fill in the blanks, <laughs> it would work for all of us. It was very well. It, it, actually, very it well. works well, and we have the larger yes. know, package, yeah, um, but I think it is a nice Well, synthesis. you missed this. We had something similar to this last year, but if you remember, we had the water yeah. I, I was there so for the water event. We had to wrap of the event. Yes. Oh, that's right. It rained yes. on me. This was the it evacuation <laughs> meeting. You were all sat at the couch like this. this and did sort of our second. You didn't get to around. see it. Yes. Yes. Well, it looks uh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. It's less dramatic this year. Yeah, it is a little less dramatic, but not quite as cozy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So thank you. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to my school council. And really this, I feel like the work that I have to share with you tonight is um, of, so far in my time at Elmwood, the most collaborative input of staff. Um, we, I feel like folks really wanted to give input to the things that we were working on. and I appreciate that. So to just a quick review of this year's first goal was really focused strongly on literacy and the idea that we wanted to provide for staff some professional development that was really targeted on, on what all people should be focusing their instruction on. And um, that was met with a variety of, you know, some folks were all in and others were, I don't know why I need to know this when I'm already pretty spectacular, and they are, so it's hard to argue with that. Um, so uh, we have made some really nice progress. We did literacy PD at Elmwood School, which was bi-monthly during our um, building-based meetings. Our literacy coach conducted some guided reading, professional development, and really gave us an opportunity to focus our conversations on how we teach, um, and that was, that was helpful. All of the times that she presented to staff as a whole, the following week she came to each PLC and followed up with smaller groups if there were questions, if there were things that she wanted to make clearer. Uh, the, week, the work continued in, in PLCs. We were able to purchase BAS conversion kits, and then Deb Moriarty, our, our coach, was able to follow up with every teacher in our building to talk about how do we give the BAS assessment, what kinds of, we, we really needed some work at Elmwood to align the practice to make sure that we were giving um, the test as it should be, and, um, and there were new tools that came out that she gave folks professional development with in terms of the comprehension conversations and helping to decide where kids are at. Um, she also worked with individuals. She modeled how to give the test, or she watched uh, teachers give the BAS and then gave them feedback about how to make it a little bit more of a consistent practice. We purchased LLI kits this year, and um, and that provided some intense support to kids that weren't making progress in, in typical ways. Uh, Deb also worked with our book room, in our book room, I should say, um, and with our book room, and really helped us weed out old materials, things we no longer really needed, and helped us to focus our purchasing when we had the money um, on things that teachers needed and kids needed. Um, we also did a lot of work this year on our curriculum maps and are really in a, in a really good place and, and shout outs to the CTLs who did the majority of the work um, to prepare our teachers to, to have a common guide to their instruction. Some of the things that we hope to continue to focus on and I'll talk a bit about soon uh, is the use of PLC time. So uh, that's kind of a constant issue. When teachers get together, they have things they really feel like they must talk about. And so I, I've been really driving some focused look at student work and data and, um, and what do we do now kinds of things, and that will um, continue into next year. We will continue to use SRSD. Um, and we had a lot of, we had some training this year with SRSD to catch up all staff and then we also trained anyone who hadn't been trained prior to this year. Something else that will continue into next year is lesson modeling. So that was part of our goal this year and it's, it's a tricky thing to get, um, as Evan said, we feel as though, I keep saying to teachers, the best folks are right here. But teachers are funny folks. They, they feel like they're not doing anything special, and they're reluctant to have other folks watch them because they think they're, they're timid about their practice in some cases. So getting them to sh showcase what they're really good at with one another is, can be hard, if you can imagine. Uh, something we created this year is called a pineapple chart, and, and if you know, pineapples symbolize welcome. And so we created this chart where if I were teaching a math lesson tomorrow and I felt comfortable inviting folks in, I'd post math lesson 10 p.m. at uh, 10 a.m. Excuse me, and um, staff who wanted to it feels like 10 p.m. <laughs> staff who wanted to take get in there could just pop in. It wasn't it wasn't formal. It wasn't structured. They could sit in, maybe even answer email or do some planning while they watched. Kind of a low threat way to get our foot into each other's doors. Also, we had a grade two math CTL that did a lot of purposeful math modeling and she modeled for other 
teachers in the building, both new and veteran, uh, about things that she was working on. So that's been really good, but we want to keep that work going. Our literacy coach has also started doing some videos. So when she's working in a room, if she's modeling, she um, is taping those sessions so that people who can't be there could watch it later. And she can circle back with the teacher and say, here's what I did. Here's why I did it. Sometimes having newer teachers understand why did you make that decision is really something to focus on. Our goal, too, this year was also around social-emotional learning. We, I, I think, I don't remember whether it was Evan who said it or who said, the more we work here, the more we feel like we have to work here. So I've re <laughs> we've revised this um, social-emotional goal. Um, I think we just are starting to get a better sense of what what we can do and there's been an incredible amount of enthusiasm with our staff on this this work um, some of the progress we made this year is we identified places where we were doing good work and we and where things were already in place but we also identified places that we need to do more we created a social emotional learning team and a committee the team focused a little bit more on interventions student specific interventions and the committee was sort of a happy bunch who met monthly and talked about what could we do what kind of a lot of enthusiasm about let's try this or um what not the the guidance counselor had a lot of professional development this year about social emotional learning and yesterday she met with yesterday she went on a to a conference with other guidance counselors from Hopkinton um, and today during our social emotional learning committee she shared a, a 13 pages of notes that she took at this um, conference that she was so excited to to share with us sometimes it's it's a it's tricky to send someone out one person out to get something that they're to bring back to the whole group and it, today this morning it was uh, kind of felt nice to see that she was so enthusiastic and everybody oh we could do this we could do that so that's exciting work something that we want to continue to focus on is making sure that educators who are so driven to get our kiddos where they need to be academically don't forget the importance of the, the link between how you're feeling and how you're doing. Um, and we know that kids have to feel good to, to do good. And we have to keep that as a focus. And we have to focus that for teachers too. Teachers are feeling so driven to do well academically that they forget their own um, emotional health. And so we want to focus a bit more on that. And, as, and a shared understanding of the importance of caring relationships. I don't think there's an elementary teacher alive who doesn't know how important it is to love their kids. But um, we want to make sure that they understand that each kiddo in the building needs to have a, a relationship that's strong. Um, so there's a lot of commonality between um, these th my goals for this year, but a, a, a stronger focus, I think. For goal one, for the coming year, our, info our focus will sp be specifically reading. So not just literacy, but really reading. Um, helping people fine tune their guided reading strategies that they're using and um, and work in PLCs. I'm going to go straight to the strategies and activities. Um, professional learning communities is a place that we really want to get dig our heels in. Um, something that we, we've talked about a lot this year as a staff is what do you do after you've done your work? So what, what we're going to start, we did a little bit of work this year with groups of folks who came together and looked at the standards and talked about what will we go teach. Next year, I want every teacher to have an opportunity to work in a small group. What, we're, we're, what we started to work on is look at our standards, which everybody's really comfortable with, then look at the, for, for our second graders, look at the standards in first grade, look at the standards in third grade, and, and not a lot of classroom teachers have time really to do that. So we've carved out time that they'll do that work in school and then look at, all right, if they're going to get all that work in K and 1, we don't need to keep going with it in 2. Um, and certainly three. So that's work we'll do in the coming year. Um, and then how do we create an, a, a, a learning experience? I don't want folks to feel they have to be lockstep, but we want teachers to have a, a handful of learning experiences that are common across the grade level in order to come back, put their heads together, and say what works, what doesn't work, uh, why did it not work, those kinds of things, and adjust the practice. Also looking at data at that time will be really helpful for kids. 
Um, we also want to look at more targeted professional development. So rather than having a global, hey, this is what everyone's going to learn, if a teacher needs more work on um, guided reading, that's what they can get. If a teacher needs more work on inferencing or, or conferencing with kids, that's what they'll work on. Um, also want to continue our focus in the book room. I know it sounds like a silly thing, but that's the place where teachers go to create their learning experiences for kids and so we want to make sure that they understand you know when I when I was a, a first grade teacher years ago I had a teacher's manual and that was really that that really guided everything I did now we're asking folks to be differentiated look at what kids need and, and access the materials in order to do so next year we will continue to use our scope and sequence um, and make that kind of move that from a tool that CTLs created and, and everybody accessed to a tool that teachers have a, a strong hand in, a, a sort of a living document we call it, and as, as they need to, they all have ownership of it and make changes as they go. Foundations will also continue to be a focus in grade two and in grade three as needed. Our second goal for next year, as I said, is a social emotional learning goal. And um, the language about the reasons for that hasn't changed, but how we hope to get there has, in, in our minds, been a little bit more focused. So if you look at the strategies and activities section, you'll see that the work for next year is broken down in three parts. It's, we have some work that we think all staff will do. We have some work that we think the social emotional learning team will focus on. And then we have some work that Mr. McCann and I will focus on one more page. Carol, please. Uh, that, no, that's okay. Uh, people are looking and they can't see. So um, we, and what that means is for all staff, we want to talk about mindfulness. Now, for some people, that's a really comfortable conversation. Um, people who are maybe currently do, have a yoga practice <laughs> or they are... Um, they're meditating in the morning before they come to school or they're journaling or, or something like that. And if I were to say that we're all going to do that, there are some that would love that and some that would say, whoa, that's not for me. So we're going to look at what it means to feel safe and emotionally safe at work um, because we think if teachers feel emotionally safe, kids will be the beneficiaries of that. Um, and we also want to create some tools for our teachers to use with kids. So when we're constantly saying things like, what do the lines look like in Elmwood School, that we actually show them a video of what the lines could look like or should look like, and kids really connect with, hey, that's, that's my brother, that's my cousin, that's me, um, and they know what the ex that's what the expectations are. Uh, also want to really spend time next year focusing on positivity and uh, acknowledging students in I know it can't be strictly positive ways, but that will be our goal. <laughs> um, and then the work of the social-emotional team will be more targeted for those Tier 2 kids that need a little bit more. Um, some of the ideas that the team has already brought forward is to create a really solid way of determining which kids need guidance support, which kids need um, a, a really focused support team to look at their behaviors and, and, and other things that are needed in their family or their, their general um, world. And then identifying student behaviors in classrooms. Um, sometimes there's a behavior in a classroom that really affects the whole community. And so we want to be able to provide support in those cases. And also giving teachers who need it some tools. Um, you know, there's sometimes really simple tricks that a teacher can, can implement that suddenly have a student feeling really good about himself um, and maybe it's a thing that they hadn't thought of before. Um, so kind of identifying some of those tools that teachers could use. The, the team has also agreed to create some lessons and focused units that they will share with staff to use so that we kind of have a common language around behavior and, and um, expectations and, and needs. Uh, Aiden and I um, will continue to provide professional development. We will have Jessica Minahan return. She was here in the fall and will come again in the fall. That was received of all the whole school, before school professional development that I've been involved in in Hopkinton. That was perceived by all staff as 100% uh, important and effective and, and enjoyed. So we're excited that um, we could bring her back and that was through Hopkins School helped us do that. So thank you to them. The other thing that Aiden and I have started to plan are what we're going to affectionately call some road shows. 
So we'll be in classrooms uh, in the beginning of the year. Just to overview, here's what we expect at Elmwood School. It's a particularly important to second grade, who may come along and think, what's what it's, what's the culture here? Um, on things like the cafeteria, the quiet lines, the how do I get on and off the bus? And we also have a buddy bench at Elmwood, and what's that? And how do you use it? And how how could I access that? And also, we realize the need to train paraprofessionals. They don't often get the same PD the teachers get, so we really want to make sure that the paras who are in big places like the cafeteria or the gymnasium at dismissal or the playground, that they have a strong sense of, here's what we need to do. And if they are struggling at all with what to do, they know where to go for help. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful. Does anybody have questions or comments? Great job. Thank you. Very well done. Yep. Yeah. yeah. In, back to my comment between before, I love the way the presentations are. It would be really nice to, if we could get those up on the website. Sure. Yeah. You can do that. I just want to say thank you for the book room. Because even though it only sounds like a book room, what's happening in there is we are getting just right books, pairing books, and creating those, what I like to call multimodal, multi-genre text sets, right? And I know Deb is working at that. And I will just say to you that I was with three Elmwood second grade teachers today, and they were talking about a unit on the K-Pop tree, and I thought, that's it. So, oh, good, good. You. Well, and thank you. A lot of the money has come from grants, and it's a, an enormous expense. And when we yes. start to provide books for teachers, you realize you need a little more and a little more. It's like if you give a mouse a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Excellent. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. And last but not least. Hello. So it all ends here this time. It all <laughs> ends here. So earlier, I was completing our last kindergarten orientation Ooh, at Center. So wow. that it's bittersweet. It's a milestone. But boy, what a difference it will be in that new cafeteria. <laughs> okay. next year, the old orientation. I hope so. so. Comparison, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just exactly. To see Mary I know. Up. So something that is unique about my presentation is I am combining two previous student, uh, not student councils, um, school councils and school improvement plans into one. Um, so I'm going to go back and forth a little bit in terms of this was this gold center at preschool shared or whatnot. Um, so I must thank our school councils as the other um, administrators have. They, we just have a wonderful group of parent participants, of teachers that participate. Something I'm still going to do, plug out there, community reps. We would love a community rep on our school council. That always seems to be the greatest challenge is filling that role. So. HPTA coordinates those positions. If you are interested, reach out to the HPTA. So a community rep means you do not have a child in the school. So it can be any age. It would be fun for somebody just to be able to see. It would be, absolutely. It would be. It would be. So with our um, center school improvement plan, our first goal last year focused on literacy. We were working on improving the capacity, building that capacity of our instructional educators, working on PLC conversations, that review of curriculum uh, instruction and assessment, modeling lessons, observations, working with colleagues, as well as the literacy coach and then the administration. So our successes include shared experiences. As Mrs. Carver mentioned at Elmwood, the literacy-based professional development at building-based meetings, we share the literacy coach. So alternating meetings that occurred, and it might have been a slightly different focus at center school, but having that conversation. Sometimes it was direct shared uh, protocols with texts that focused on guided reading. At times it was more authentic generated from teachers bringing conversation about uh, fluency, comprehension, whatever expertise they had um, to share. Things that have resulted over the course of the year with that focus, the PLCs have that professional capacity and conversation. I cannot always attend the PLCs, but I see the evidence of that work in classrooms when teachers are sharing their evidence for evaluation, and that's the testament of true professional learning is that the, the level that carries on with that, and that's just so rewarding. 
So along with that, our Literacy Coach has worked individually and with small groups and PLCs to model, educate. As with Elmwood, we've uh, updated our assessment tool and we've worked on consistency so that no matter who may administer this assessment, you yield the same results. And again, work with comprehension. Things that she has reinforced with us um, is what level of prompting? How do you record that? Because there is a little individuality uh, recording that can happen with that, she has helped streamline that so that it's with um, greater consistency. And we've worked on, as we have high standards in the state of Massachusetts, we've worked on how do we incorporate developmentally appropriate practice into those learning opportunities so that children are thinking critically, they're creative, they're collaborating, and they're building communication skills. So while this goal is not being carried, for, carried forward, it is being delivered alive and well through now this is just a way of life so where this was a goal focus to highlight that importance now it's there that we will something uh, continually revisit so that's a good thing now I'm going to jump to the preschool school improvement plan. The first goal in the preschool school improvement plan was that we would successfully submit for NAEYC accreditation this May as we have been working on this process and it is a multi-year process when we were reviewing all of the requirements, of, it's a very stringent, <coughs> rigid program in terms of what aspects is this program requiring us to seek, document, submit. It is very time in intensive. And as we were reviewing this, it sounds just so naive, but we came to the realization is we have this. We don't need this validation of this NAEYC formal stamp of approval to note that we have a high quality preschool program. When you look at all of the standards, we have high quality staff. We work on continuous professional development, family outreach, and we were outlining everything. Is there anything that is out of alignment with their program criteria and there is not so we made a mindful decision that we will continue our work with preschool maintaining those standards but we can do that within ourselves and that was a discussion we had at our school council we've shared that with families so that um, the reasoning also of why that we made that decision and um, people have felt good about that So now we did have a, sh so something that's helpful is being principal of both schools. We had a shared <laughs> goal, <laughs> trying to help bridge the gap across the, the, the miles here in town. Uh, so our second goal in both school improvement plans did focus on social emotional learning, that we would work on addressing students' needs. We'd have um, activities and strategies that we would use with our students. So along with the other schools, we have a team. We, called ours, we call ours the CELT, our social emotional learning team. It is comprised of a teacher representation, and we do, we in, did incorporate preschool staff members, so they would come over to center for our meetings, um, which was wonderful. We have um, psychologists, preschool, and our K-1 psychologist, our nurse, guidance counselor, um, assistant principal, myself. What was nice is we have, as we have gone to workshops and conferences, we felt ahead of the game in terms of where we were because of the composition of that team. The nurse is part of that team. The psychologist is part of that team. You know, teachers are representative, um, and and that just that team meets regularly and we help address what are some common grade wise, school wise things that we'll approach. Uh, we've had benefited from Jessica Minahan, as Ian mentioned, that Hopkins brought in. We've had a presentation at the start of last year. What followed from that is teachers wanted more. So we had some book clubs. We had an online book club. So even those at differing schools could participate and share, reflect on their comments. Paraprofessionals were able to participate professional staff were able to participate and then we also had an in-person book club um, we've worked on our social skills outreach our psychologist and uh, guidance counselor at center delivers lessons in every k-1 classroom and the teachers are there as well so they hear the language they can reinforce the language and our psychologist did so um, bearing that to the preschool level we have uh, our zones of regulation we're trying to work on as the other schools mentioned self-awareness how do you feel um, sometimes it's hard for children to label their feelings properly. Sometimes they're just bored when they're not bored, but they, 
they're feeling sad, they're feeling worried, but bored might be something common that comes about. So the zones of regulation helps not only with that feeling, but also when kids are upset, they're feeling anxious, they're worried, they're mad. Those are normal feelings, so we work on how to uh, appropriately respond to those feelings. We also work on our, we have a consistent voice levels. You know, when we say one, everybody across the school should know what, it, what that means. And that sounds simple, but before we had charts, we had bells, we had half circles. So it was hard for children to understand when you say this, what does that mean? When you say that, it means something different. So it's a consistent approach of what a level one is, what a level zero is. Um, we work on cubs. Cubs, Cubbies are a mascot. Cubs stands for, uh, when we work on this, we focus on cooperation, earning cubby paws when we see children being cooperative and we outline what that means, understanding, being brave, being safe. Um, cubby will come to Marathon. We're just going to get him a T-shirt that says Marathon. <laughs> We love Cubby. Um, so this goal will be carried forward to next year, and it'll just look a little different. So when we look at our school improvement for Marathon... Our goal, we are in a unique position. Our goal, while we've worked on curriculum maps, as the other schools have, we now have the opportunity to add alignment to that, more so than we have in the past. So preschool K-1 will be under one roof. What is the grade prior grade working on? What's the, the receiving grade working on? How do we make sure, as the other schools mentioned, we're not redundantly working on the same skills? This past year, we've worked on developing maps, so the focus really has been almost um, as children focus on themselves, that egocentric, kind of grade-centric, if you will, but we need to broaden that to see what the other grades are working on and how does that fit, how does my work um, align with that, and also it does help teachers let go. They're going to get this in the next grade, or they've already done it. You know, this is my job. As the Common Core um, uh, promotes their standards, it's more like a stare, you know, and helping children, under uh, not children, I mean the staff, <laughs> understand that um, just reinforces and helps them um, feel good about that. So the way that we will do that is working on our learning objectives. What is it we need students to know and be able to do? It sounds like a very basic question, but when you pull in all of our standards, all of our expectations for students. That's a big question. And also, what are we going to do to instruct them? How are we going to teach the children? How are we going to address the diverse learning needs? How are we going to address those that are approaching meeting expectations, that are meeting them already, and those that are exceeding? Um, those are big questions that speaks to that uh, adjustment of practice, and that's not something you can write a book for or follow a plan. You can have guidelines, but you need to be able to respond to the learner in front of you. An assessment. So we've added um, more assessments over the, the years in terms of observational assessments. Sometimes it's a survey. Sometimes it might be computer-based. But those are almost checks. Think of an oil change. You're checking in. Is there oil in your engine? Is our learning, is our instructional impact having the result that we want with student learning. So looking at those assessments, we want to use assessments that are purposeful. You, you don't want to give assessment if you're not going to do anything with the data. So we want to make sure that we are using our time wisely and also reviewing that information. Our second goal is social emotional learning. As we've worked on expanding this, um, we will now be able to carry over more in depth with preschool. They've been remote. Cubby never travels to Elmwood. Um, <laughs> he never gets to make it over there. But in terms of some of our school-wide approaches, they've been working from afar, if you will. So now we'll be under one roof. We will be able to do that. But something that we need to focus on is building more staff understanding around trauma. There's a, a phrase that you'll hear, what are trauma-sensitive schools being responsive to student needs? And at first you might think, oh, we, we don't fit in that category. We don't have that need. But when you really look at what is the definition of trauma, what does it mean to be a trauma-sensitive school? We have children whose daily life impacts the ability to function in some of those social-emotional categories, that it inhibits 
almost like the healthy development of it because they have a chaotic home life, they're temporarily homeless, perhaps they had a fire, perhaps someone lost their job and financially they're not able to do what they used to do. So it's not always trauma like a major event such as an earthquake or a mudslide because often, I'm going to say honestly, that's what I was thinking of it or thinking some of the, um, the inner cities, if you will, thinking, okay, we don't experience that. But as I've learned more about it, we do. And we need to promote that understanding with staff on how we approach children. So years ago when we were in school, we didn't have any of this education and you were just told to do something and you did it. Now we work on teaching, laying that expectation. And it's not as if we're ignoring a behavior, if you will, or a challenge, but that is communication. So why is that happening? How do we help build up that competency in students? So building that understanding among staff, we're being sensitive to their development, their needs, and areas to grow. Um, so that will be a focus that we work on through professional development next year. We will, Jessica Minahan will be returning um, this August to meet with our staff, and that is pre-K to five, and that, again, is a terrific way to start the year. She is an experienced um, educator, a behavior um, BCBA, and just her stories have such relevance for teachers it, it was wonderful. We're also going to work on building our toolkits. What are our resources that teachers can sort of pull out of their toolkit, if you will, to support student needs? It might be physical items that are in their classrooms. It might just be building that mental memory of how to respond to certain situations. So we will be building and adding that so all teachers have access to such things. An opportunity that presented itself in Marathon is while we have 13 physical rooms for kindergarten, we are utilizing 12 next year, we have an opportunity for something special with that 13th classroom. That will be the green zone. So when we work on zones of regulations, the green zone is the great place to be. You're comfortable, you're calm, you're just right. This classroom will be used as a green zone, a positive space where you can come practice those skills. You can exercise, sharing, taking turns. We're going to have have some items and materials in here that enough a whole class could come use and practice or perhaps it's a selected group and it will always be with the staff it's not a go to yourself we're not at that age we can't do that maybe at the high school um, but what's wonderful is it is a place devoted to that of positivity getting yourself back in the green zone perhaps if you're feeling um, a little in the red zone, which might be upset, or a little lethargic, maybe we need to wake up, we're in the yellow. Um, something else that we will do next year is through conversation with the other principals, we all have a best team, a social emotional learning team, and we talk about things in our own buildings, but we don't do enough of sharing between buildings. So next year, a goal, because I can host it, um, we'll have a space, <laughs> is we will meet at least three times a year with those other teams from the other schools to share what's working. And while it might not always be applicable for what fifth graders are doing, for what preschoolers are, how wonderful to hear what's going on, because something might translate. Or to know when they are coming to Elmwood and they're working on a buddy bench, hey, we had something like that at center, and here's a video we used to explain it and to share that with staff and, and resources so that, um, that we're thrilled for that connection. And something else we'd like to do s to support this goal, again, we have space, is once a month work on a family education speaker series. Something that I think is critical is having families understand the importance of social-emotional development. Yes, we want academics. We want children to read and know their math facts. But these are underlying life skills that if we can't help build this foundation, you see a lot of challenges as children get over with anxiety, worry, feelings of not being connected connected with your classmates or, or peers and um, you know how to solve problems. And no matter what age you are, these are incredibly um, pertinent skills. And when the older you become, the more obvious it is if you have uh, deficits in these areas. So our goal is to build that up, help build with, un with families the importance of that as well as things they can do to support that um, to carry that learning over at home. Thank you. So that's that's marathon. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting just to drive by and see oh. how it is. it is. So the ribbon cutting I shared with everyone at um, kindergarten orientation is um, June 9th. Um, so it's open to the public. If you can't come right at 1, come later in the day after your soccer or t-ball game um, because it will be nice just to experience it and just walk through. 
Okay. I'm excited. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Thank, thank you for all your good work. Oh, thank you. It's. They yeah. will go now, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. You just, they, thank you. I, I think I might have slipped into the yellow zone a little bit. Yeah, well, you <laughs> might have. I, I should have brought oh. an energizer. Yes. We could. Yeah, I'm, tr I'm, I'm <laughs> headed for the green zone. But, okay. I, I mean, really, this all of it is just so comprehensive. I think it shows the power of the school council and the input oh. that parents have and, um, you know, the how it helps you all to understand what you all know what you're talking about, but how is that translating to home and um, for families? So I think this is great. I mean, really, all five of you, absolutely outstanding, and I hope that you'll uh, please convey to all of your school councils. This has been really impressive. I think this is probably, like for me, this is the capstone of my many years here in terms of um, the presentation and just the how accessible it is to the lay person, if you will. So, um, so this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Yeah. I must say thank you to all of you, too. You have worked enormously hard on all this, so thank you. And it brings out some of the work that isn't seen day to day and in, in how much goes into every little thing that we're seeing. It, it really is impressive. It's also impressive just to see the five of them together. I know. I like that. <laughs> so nice. Thanks. You're an impressive group. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all very much. Unless you want to stay to see Mr. Ghosh. Present. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're welcome to stay. And I think, do we need to vote on this? Oh, I suppose there's no downside to voting. No, I think, on this. I think it's gone back and forth over the years whether we have to yes. or not. But yeah. <clears throat> um, so yes. I assume yes. that you are recommending approval of the school improvement plan. So I'm just looking for a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay. So a motion by Jen, a second by Mina. All in favor? Yes. 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 So thank you all very much. Excellent work. Thank you. Okay, so um, we still have several items left under new business, but since Mr. Ghosh is here, why don't we do sure. that next so yes, he doesn't that would be fine. have any later of a night than he already does. Um, so mm -hmm. say, Ashok, would you like to come up now and do, so you don't have to sit here for... We have to be here till the end anyway, but you <laughs> You don't. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to watch on the H camera. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. As one does. Well, welcome. Good evening. Good to see you all. Thank you for, for hanging in there with this policy over oh, the many oh. months oh. And, um, and for coming back. So yeah, sorry just, I missed the... Uh, you were way ahead. You were so ahead of schedule. I really am so sorry about that one. So I'm glad we're. And that was before the ice cream was open. It right? really that was yes. opportunity and we missed it. Less. We did miss it. That was a bummer. All right. So if you want to refresh our memory about where we are sure. with policy um, IJNDB, Internet Acceptable. I believe this, you said it already, right? This is the third reading? Is yes. That right? I think the last um, meeting, I think we were tasked with. Um, taking the uh, guidelines, uh, so we created a, a whole new set of social media guidelines uh, for staff and employees, uh, and we were tasked with uh, creating a small subcommittee uh, to take those guidelines to that group of people, have them vet that, um, and uh, so that, that happened uh, in between the first reading and, and now. Um, we also allowed the association to have time to take a look at the, the policy, take a look at the guidelines and give us some feedback on it. Um, and so that's, that's happened and the HTA has um, kind of endorsed the, the guidelines and think they seem to be a good fit in alignment with what they're looking for. Uh, the, the principals and administrators have had a chance to look at it uh, and provide feedback. So we've kind of taken that feedback and made some changes, um, you know, primarily uh, around um, our discussion that we had um, about uh, what to do really around photos and the photo restriction and how that was going to integrate. There was definitely a section uh, at one of our last meetings that uh, kind of had some good discussion about what, what to do and how can we kind of monitor uh, student photos and photo restrictions and how that can get out of control with social media from time to time. So we pinned down in the guidelines themselves some, some language that helps clarify that. So in essence, to keep it simple, if, if someone has a photo restriction um, on file with the district based on policy JRD, uh, that they um, will not be uh, 
employees will not be allowed to post anything on social media uh, within within the school district. So, and that's uh, we can go over that in, in just a bit. So, so people have had a chance to debrief, take a look at it. Um, I think the major changes, in addition to um, having the social media guidelines, uh, was really um, if you look kind of uh, under the under social networking. Um, we also just put in there the, the, the requirement of having um, a school account. You know, so up until this point, we've strongly encouraged staff to use a, a Hopkinton email address to create any social media accounts. Uh, but we've added language in the policy to kind of require that um, all staff use a Hopkinton email address when establishing social media accounts. Um, in addition to that, we added some language, uh, I think, in the first reading that um, gives us a little more control over personal hotspots within the district. So trying to ban personal hotspots in the district so students aren't just directly connecting to the web and, and bypassing our mobile filters, which we're required to do by law. Uh, so we added that language, and that was um, vetted previously um, by our legal team as well and said that was uh, okay to do. So uh, in addition to that, we cleaned out some old language uh, under employees will not. There used to be some old language around MySpace and specific social media sites. So we, we refreshed that and try to get some common language, uh, for example, use telephone, social media, or other electronic messaging vehicles for contact with students unrelated to school or school-related activities. So we tried to generalize the language so it covers, you know, multiple types of social media. Um, and beyond that, I think those are some of the the major changes. I don't know if I, I missed anything there, but I believe that was the major updates um, to the policy. Thank you. That's very comprehensive. Does anybody have a question? I think you've done, I mean, it's impossible to project what could be the reality of it, some of this yeah. in, in a year or two. So I think, you know, based, I think the changes are good. Um, I, I noticed one thing that a bullet got repeated twice, okay. which hopefully does not affect our ability to vote on this after no, the third yeah. reading, but it's not a big deal. It's under uh, prohibited behaviors, accessing okay. confidential information is on there twice. That's the only yeah. thing I noticed at all. Oh, Otherwise, yes. Sorry about that. Well, okay. it's... It's just reinforcing it. Okay. You should really Perfect. Do yeah, really can, driving that one home. Yeah. But um Scratch but otherwise I think it's I think it's great. Thank you. Yeah. Did you have anything? No, I, I think we've you've done a nice job. I think we've had all of the things we've discussed reflected in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. My only um the only thing that jumped out at me as you were describing the updates is I wonder if we also should include policy JRD and the photo restrictions in the policy crops reference box. Oh, true, yes. I didn't. Um, so I think, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, th I think this is great. And I, I know this was um, a really <laughs> complex one. So thank you. This was yeah, a this lot is of uh, something the districts needed as well. I think, you know, as, as technology has changed, it's been a little while since we've looked at it. So I think it it meets the, the the current need of the district in terms of our our use and and I think it's more flexible going into the future as well. It doesn't require us to change it every time MySpace changes to Facebook Correct. or whatever yeah, else. True. I mean, it right. just it, that that's a big improvement as well. So, um, does anybody else have any questions or considerations? So then I would just look to Dr. Kavanaugh for her recommendation. Oh, yes, I recommend that we vote to approve this. <laughs> okay, so we, um, I just need a motion to approve policy IJNDB as amended. So moved. In a second? Second. Okay, so um, a motion by Nancy, a second by Mina. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so that's unanimous, and we'll make those two small changes before we post it. You got those? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate this is great. It. Thank you. Excellent. Have a good work. evening. You can enjoy watching. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> Make sure you take a um, Okay. So let's see where we are now on new business C, school choice. School choice. Okay. So Dr. Kavanaugh. Okay, so I am uh, recommending that we do not participate in school choice for the 2018-2019 school year. I did bring along these because 
Mrs. Devlin asked me a question about how long it has been since Hopkinton participated in school choice, and I just thought that this was interesting and appears on the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website. Um, so currently we do have a few kids who leave our district to go to other schools um, where school choice is, is offered, but um, I think given the fact that our enrollment is climbing every day and there are buildings in which we have space constraints, it just doesn't make sense to take students from other districts. Oh, so this first column, so it looks like we have not allowed school choice since 2005. Correct, yeah. That makes sense even given we our enrollment. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like we were sending a whole lot more out than were coming in at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yes, I do remember that. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that's really interesting. I've never seen this chart before. Oh. That's very interesting. Well, so I thank, thank you for asking. You. No, thank yeah. you. I think this is great. Oh, sorry. When you look at the difference between, for example, 1996, when we had <clears throat> 77 and a half students, yes. uh, <laughs> I know, but the, the point poor child. Kind of, I, I guess, struck me too. Yeah. I, I'm guessing it's a child that was part of the year out, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> not part of the student. Yes. Uh, it, it, in 1996 and in 2017, we have six had 16, uh, and yet we our enrollment is larger in 2017 than in oh yes, yes, yes. So significantly larger. Yeah. But, and the cost of tuition has we're paying out as a result much less. Yes. I actually did some research today on student enrollment for a different reason. And in 1998, we had 2,456 students. We have more than 1,000, more than that. Wow. Now, wow. That really ten years struck me okay, in 20, 20 years. Wow. 20, 20 years. <coughs> I mean, 1998 was definitely 10 years ago. Yes, 20. <laughs> <laughs> in my college daughters. I know. I know. It's <laughs> 10 and 10 more. But um, at any rate, I thought that was fascinating. Um, so... Dr. And thank you. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Dr. Kavanaugh, uh, would you be able to share where these 16 uh, children are going? We did actually do that research. I can send it to you, yes, because both Susan and I were curious about it. So I'm happy to send it. Thank you. And just to be clear for anybody listening, these are not special education students. These are students Correct. that en enroll, like, for example, they'd rather go to the Holliston High School or... Yes. Else. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, there are kids who go to Medway or kids who go to AMSA. Mm -hmm. And it exactly. could be children whose parents are teachers in those districts that allow them to. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. AMSA is counted in here as well, which is charter. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, so so that, that's not just school. out of district, it's charter as well. Yes. But, okay. you know, Massachusetts yes. charter schools consider I, themselves I, yes. public. Okay. Right. I know they do, but I was thinking oftentimes kids going to a charter school are looking for something particular. Different. Yes. Yeah. Kind of like we have kids that go to. Keep deck or down to Norfolk Aggie are looking for particular programs, not just a general public. Exactly. High yeah. yeah. And I'm also curious to know where does this tuition fee show on a budget? It's not a huge number. Uh, it, it's, it's a general number. fund, it, so it's not something that comes directly into us. Okay. Okay. It's going out of us, as a matter of fact, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Um, so I'm just looking for a motion to approve the acting superintendent's recommendation not to participate in school choice for the 2018-2019 school year. So moved. And second? Second. Okay, so motion by Nancy, a second by Nina. All in favor? Yeah. Yes. yes. Anybody opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, so the next item on our agenda is the MOU with the HTA. And um, we did meet, I'll do that later, Jean. Um, we did meet in executive session to review the um, contract, the proposed contract with the HTA, um, actually should be MOA, yes. Memorandum of, uh, of Agreement with the HTA. We did vote in executive session um, to to ratify the contract with the HTA. Um, so, but we also, as is our practice, need to vote, that's re-vote basically in um, open session as well. So, uh, unless there are any questions or discussion, I am looking for the recommendation of the superintendent to um, ratify the, the MOA. Yes. 
I recommend that you ratify the MOA. <laughs> All right, so I just need a motion to approve the vote to ratify the MOA with the HTA. So moved. And a second. I'll second that one. Okay, so motion by Nancy, second by Jen. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So thank you very much, and I do want to thank the leadership of the HTA very much for um, what I felt was a very collaborative and comprehensive process, and always there's give and take, but I feel like um, it was it was a very good um, process, and I think it resulted in a favorable agreement for the teachers as well as for the district, and there's a lot of value provided on both sides. So um, I really, you know, kudos to them. Um, it was a lot of work, but I I think we had some spirited discussions, but we worked very, I think, very well together overall. Yes. So I thought it was a great exercise and a great result. So thank you. Um, okay, so <coughs> next is the lacrosse scorekeeping mm -hmm. position. Is Ms. King coming this week? She way, is not, is she? no. Okay, great. We knew that she was Good. not able to. Um, but just a couple of days ago, she was looking through the list of stipends and recognized that there was no stipend there for a lacrosse scorekeeper, and <coughs> obviously she needs one. And so what she is hoping is that, and what I'm recommending, is that you will vote to approve that position, and then after the first year, Mrs. Pulnick will um, engage in nego negotiations with the HTA to establish that. Okay. position permanently. Okay, so are there any questions? No. You answered my question was just how, how does that affect the contract? So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So then um, it's your recommendation that we it is. approve? Okay, so I'm just looking to approve, for a motion, excuse me, to approve the addition of a lacrosse scorekeeper to the event staff list to be paid $40 per game. So moved. And a second? A second. Okay, so that was a motion by Mina, second by Jen. All in favor? Yes. 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 Any opposed? So that's um, unanimous, and that passes. So now we are on to um, old business. We just already did old business A, so we're on old business B, school committee policy BIA. Um, <coughs> oh, I just skipped past it. Sorry, in my packet. Um, BIA New School Committee Member Orientation. So Mina, do you want to take the lead on this? Sure. Um, this uh, policy and you know the whole concept of orientation for school committee members, this was something we had talked about earlier in the year, and I'd spoken with Jean, and she had said that, you know, go ahead, run with your ideas, um, and see what you come up with. Um, so where it landed was with the budget and the superintendent search, we put it all on hold, and it just came back up fairly recently. And I wasn't there when the first reading happened, and I listened to some of the comments that were received, and um, where I was personally with all of this was, my thought was if we had a handbook for a new school committee member, which is a little bit more comprehensive, which talks to a little bit about um, where do you go, almost like an FAQ, and also have some things like what is tech, what is accept, what are all these other roles that we take on, what does a budget advisory group do, how do you conduct yourself, um, you know, how can you get an agenda item on the uh, meeting. So things of that nature were what were on my mind. Um, at the same time, within the time frame and with um, the challenges that I was facing, I was not able to pull that together. Um, but I also listened to some of the comments that came in um, the last discussion, which was that this list is fairly comprehensive from a policy standpoint, right? And there were two recommendations that were made by Jean. One was related to um, adding the strategic plan to this list, as well as the school improvement plans. Also, um, uh, Mr. Graziano had asked about if the Chapter 71, um, Section 36A covers some of the other aspects, such as the ethics, um, training, etc. cetera. Um, so those are covered. So the conflict of interest, um, you know, the review of the school finance, the open meeting law, all of those are covered under the sec under um, chapter 71, Section 36A. So if we added those two lines into this policy about the strategic plan, as well as um, the school improvement plan, we can update and 
you know, move to close this okay. policy as is. If we wish to continue to work on that handbook, I will need some help because it's going to be a little bit comprehensive and it might take a little longer. Um, so I just would like to hear everyone's thoughts, ideas. I like the idea of the handbook. I think it's helpful to have something that's all in one place that you can go to find your information, even if it's overwhelming and you're handed this big list of things that you need to, to sort of learn. It's still, at least it's all in one place. So if you have a question, you can go back to it. So I know, um, you know this is the list, I guess, but I think a lot of times folks especially, I mean, if you, if you have not worked in education and you're handed this list of stuff that is all relevant to school committee work, you might not even know what it means. You know, so I think that it's it's helpful to have a go-to resource. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I was also thinking like if next year someone, as we start to look at some of the roles that each one of us has. And if we are to understand what it is, even if there is a little blurb, uh, what that entails, what does taking care of meeting minutes means? You know, a little blurb on That's that. That's a deep secret that we don't <laughs> want let out until somebody's agreed to do it. No. Yes, I learned it the hard way. Uh, Anyhow, uh, so I, I guess I was hoping that even if we have a little blurb, it doesn't have to be a huge document, um, but we can work through that. But I would require someone else to bounce those ideas off of. Um, that's where I was with that. But in terms of policy, if we just added those two lines, perhaps we can move forward with it. So you said strategic plan, and I'm sorry, what was the other thing you The school improvement so plans, which we just reviewed. School improvement plan. Right. Okay. And I think um, Jean had also talked about how handing a copy of the policies may not be the easiest thing, but more pointing to where the policies are. Yeah. Right? I mean, I was thinking that just as you guys were talking about the handbook, I think this would be a pretty heavy and big book, but... All, all of this is online, so I would say yeah. maybe if it can be an electronic handbook that has a link, then it would always go to the most current version of all of our policies and the most current version update of the strategic plan or, you know, the school improvement plans or whatever. Um, and just, you know, listening to you talk, Mina, I was also, I just also scribbled down an explanation of the liaison roles. I mean, I think we usually go over that when we um, talk about them, you know, when we divide and conquer, basically, um, at one of the early meetings, but I think, you know, having an understanding in there um, is really helpful as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think they're all really good suggestions. I think, you know, my advice, since I will not be here or be impacted, is that maybe it be an electronic handbook as opposed yes. to a physical handbook. Even um, just a list of links. I like that mm -hmm. idea. So here's all your stuff. That would be much less... It's less cumbersome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not yeah. Overwhelming. I'm about to embark on the, the project of getting rid of nine years worth of paper. So I, I guess maybe right. that's more on my mind than normal. But um, yeah. So, but I, I think that 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 would be a great, um, a great strategy going forward. And I also the only other thing I would suggest that you sort of determine up front is who is the owner and the updater of it, so that that's clear as well. So that. It it's not something that you invest a lot of time in once and everybody uses it for two years and then they forget that they have it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there's a lot of potential here. Um, I think you're right that it's not going to be completed by two weeks from today, but um, but that doesn't Maybe mean that it should be. Work, though. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that I think it would be a great conversation to have during the summer. Um, and start to talk about. I, I know men you mentioned too, Mina, that you had looked at some in other districts. So I'm sure I, there I are some. I did. I looked at. Um, you know, I want to explore more, but I had certainly looked at the Framingham School District, and I thought that was good. And hopefully, we can be a little inspired by that because they also have accept. They're part of tech, so there are a lot of um, things yep. in common. Yeah, no, I think that's good. So I mean, not have to rewrite. That's right. What I mean. Everything. Yeah. So I mean, I think in general, we all agree that the strategic plan and school improvement plans would be good to add to this policy. But what I'm wondering, given the fact that you want to, uh, you know, there are three of you, and that's a majority of the next committee, too, that you all have an interest in doing this, if maybe you just table this entire thing, just in case, you, yeah. as part of the process, you discover some other things that you want to change that relate to the policy. And certainly, you'll want to add the handbook to the procedural reference to the cross for reference. the policy. Right. So I mean, I think in general, 
you, you all are on the same page about what materials you want to share with the two new people who will be coming on. So it's up to you, but my recommendation would be that you sort of put a hold on this until you do more work on the handbook. But that it's, I think it seems like generally everybody's on the same page about the direction that it's going. So I think that's great. Um, Jean, what I was also hoping, and, and you had talked about this too, with the knowledge base that both you and John have, um, you know, and you're going out. Um, so for the next meeting, if I can have a partner, maybe we can draw an outline. We can look at the Framingham or other districts and see and kind of bring it back to you too to even look at that and see what you think if something else needs to be added with the wealth of knowledge that you have. I think that might help. But I certainly need a partner. So I love the idea of using their wealth of knowledge. My one thing that jumped out in my head is that when the, with getting the packet ready at the end of next week, we have town meeting Monday, Tuesday, yeah, that's and Monday, true. Wednesday. Yeah. I, I, and I do think that it, it, it would be a lot to try to do it yourself. So I'm not advocating that you do it. I'm not trying to dump it all on you. Okay. Um, but is there a way to? share that um, wealth of knowledge that you might want to pass on in some way. I don't know. <laughs> I, ha I don't know how you can do that. I, ha I have every confidence awesome. that you guys are able to do that without me and without John. It's. I mean, you need to know. Uh, uh, you have more recently gone through the experience of starting at the earlier part of the learning curve, so mm -hmm. I think you have all the insight that you need. But that said, I, I won't be planning to move anytime soon. I so was going to say that, that's I'm more what I was getting at. Is could we bring you happy back as a consultant? To, uh, uh, <laughs> my rates are very steep. Um, <laughs> but they yeah, commensurate with what you were making here. It's yeah. triple my current. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think I. So I think this is a great. Um, I think you're on a great path. I agree with Nancy. I think it, it would given town meeting that's a lot to expect of yourselves between now and the next meeting and um and i don't think it's probably urgent but um you know i will be watching and commenting from the public <laughs> um all right so i think we're in good shape we'll just move on from that and that's something that you guys will take up in the summer um but uh, i think that's a great conversation to have started so thank you very much for bringing that forward so for the policy we're, we're saying that we table it so we can add the so that the cross it policy the, the reference to the manual itself can be added in. Late, uh, okay, later. Yes. Yes. We'll do it all so yes. for okay, because okay. like for example, if you're going to add a description of minutes, you probably want to add in the town bylaw that governs the turnover time for minutes. Right. And so there probably will be right. things that you'll discover as you go along. Sure. And, and it doesn't seem like worthwhile to brush it to me. Right. right, and think about other things that collectively, like the, maybe the statutes that what the school co what is under the purview of the school committee by mass general law and mm -hmm. things like that. Oh, might that's be a good worth. and controversial one. Yeah, well, that's a good well, good idea because we're always looking that up well, every year. I, I, well, <laughs> I just I know when I started that was yep. one thing that I looked to 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 see what exactly is it that we're intended to be doing mm -hmm. aside from um, having fun up here. Yes, well, and you could put in some good resources I've found over the years. Like there's you can call the um, you know there are a lot of state resources that you can call Department of Education website is a, a great resource, but also like. You know the attorney general, the ethics committee. They all have call, attorney of the day call-in lines that have been super helpful to us over the years for different reasons. So I'm sure you'll have a lot that you'll want to add to it. So I think this will be a very rich resource for people going forward, and probably like a great experience for all of you just to go through it in terms of, you know. And our new members at that point will have the experience of yep. going through yeah, the discussion, yeah. and we'll get something from that. I would think mm -hmm. as well that to help them with their. I must say I haven't missed that no one volunteered. I, I am happy to help you. I am. I, know, I, I am. I, I, not next week, but I am more than happy to help you. I was thinking you know, more for this summer. We'd break it down over the summer and figure out ways that would feel. I love the impact. It's so funny. That we could chunk it out so that you're right. not yes. holding it all. Thank you. On your own. Thank you. All right. So are we good to move on to policy KF? Uh, I think we are. Okay. So we have policy KF, community use of school facilities, for our third reading. Jean, yes. um, I, I have a question. 
she's we, made us other copies. The, oh, Megan has made oh, extra helpful copies. Beautiful. Thank you, because I just realized I didn't have the right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So you, who's walking us through this? Uh, I have a question, I which I, I guess I should have asked you earlier. Um, sometimes I run a program through the HPTA, so the rate um, would affect me, the group rate. So should I exclude myself from voting on this? Well, I think that's a good question. I think we're taking the rates out of this, though. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. The, rates the, rates are, the rates are in the, the procedure. procedure. Yeah. So okay. the policy, but thank you for checking. You are in, okay. So the, I'm just looking at this. Yes, so I can start with this. Um, as you know, the red was our first go-round. The blue is our second go-round. So I think what we're looking at on this particular document, um, the most recent updates are the pink. Pink, okay. Mm -hmm. So what she has added in um, is, is the, the sentence that says, any requests for rental of the turf fields? It was just a little typo where she's added an R and took away an N and a an NOR. Mm -hmm. um, and then on that second page, we had a couple of places where we left in the word category, even though we had decided that we would be consistent mm -hmm. um, and keep groups. groups everywhere. And we also decided that in those categories that um, the groups would be recognized by the superintendent and or his or her designate. And I, I see the um, agreement has been listed in the procedural yes. the procedure reference as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions, comments, considerations? Wow. I feel like we were able to capture all of our discussion. Yes. Make some. Mm -hmm. In the rental fee schedule, we did make two changes, only that the word category was eliminated and group was inserted, okay. just to be clear. Be in, yeah. Right. And that's not part of the policy. Not, right. So we, right. So yeah, we can right. do that. Yeah. And I did want to just. doesn't require our vote anymore. I did, it, just in terms of communication, I wanted to make sure I um, was talking to Lucy and Warren this week about something else. And I don't think she was aware that we were changing this, so I just wanted to make sure that after this we communicate to Tim and to Lou that we did add um, the Diversity and Cultural Alliance to that whichever okay. group it was, um, just so that if they were to apply that there wouldn't be any mm -hmm. confusion um, on their part. So if they can just get a copy of the updated policy list. Um, and list, then I'm sure that that would streamline their decision-making process. So that would be to everybody's benefit. So I wanted to make sure we close the loop with everybody so that they know that they're. And um, did we circle back? Do we want to circle back to the HDCA just to make sure that they know that we did, it, it, their concerns were addressed oh, yeah. separately? Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, yes. I, I can do that. Um, because I think I got the email in the first place. Yep, I'd be, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. That's great. Maybe when this is all cleaned up, I'll send it to them. Perfect. Okay, all right, very good, thank you. All right, is there anything else? Okay, so um, are you recommending approval? I am recommending approval thank of this you. policy. Yep. Okay, so I'm just looking for a motion to approve policy KF as amended. So moved. And a second. Second. Okay, so I think that was a motion by Jen and a second by Nancy. Yes. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Okay, okay. unanimous. So we are at our second opportunity for public comment. But I have something. You have a public comment? I do. Okay. Are you moving chairs too? Oh, you're really going <laughs> to This is it. really going to freak me out. You're going yeah. full board on it. All right. So I was actually trying to say this early in the meeting, but I could not get your attention in time. Oh, I'm um, sorry. This I is can't. a shout out. Uh, oh, I'm Mina Bharat, 213 Ash Street. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I am uh, here to give a shout out to Mr. Bishop, Mr. Oh. Hannah, and Mr. Pominville, um, that there was an issue that came up at the high school, and I think they addressed the issue very decisively and very effectively. So I applaud their 
um, effort very very much i think we have a community which is growing which is getting to be more and more diverse um, i think a lot of these skills and um, there's a lot of learning for everyone involved here and i think while they are learning they are also acting so it takes a lot of courage to do something like that and i really really appreciate that what might seem like something minor to people but it really isn't we must have a zero tolerance policy to something of this nature and i really appreciate they nipped it in the bud so many thanks to them thank you that was very nice um anybody else inspired to make a public I, comment I'm make it, i am not moving she not set moving? the bar very high <laughs> oh, okay it's just it be a lot to stand up and walk around in front of these yeah, no. Although we do need an activity break sometimes, places. so an um, okay, get to the green zone. <laughs> get to the green zone. Um, all right. Well, thank you. So we are on our final item, which is items by consensus. Dr. Cavanaugh. Okay. As the acting superintendent, I recommend that the school committee move to approve the items by consensus as outlined below. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. A motion by Nancy. A second by Jen. All in favor. Yes. yes. Any opposed? All right. Excellent. And um, I think this was before your time, but we used to make the superintendent read every single one of these things, just saying. So. I think it was <laughs> only at one meeting I saw that, and then you changed your ways. It's been a big, <laughs> big time saver. That might have been a deal breaker in her applying. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. So I think we are ready to adjourn at 9.47 p.m. I just need a motion. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Motion by Jen, second by Mina. All in favor? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody, very much. We will see you Monday, May 7th at town meeting at 7 p.m. in the Hopkinton Middle School. All registered voters are strongly encouraged to attend all nights of town meeting and weigh in on the important articles before you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night.